Welcome back to It's All Bad. I'm here with Mike. Hey, hey, hey. Danny. Yo, yo, yo. And Charlie. This week, we're going to take you on a trip to the sur side. Oh, yeah. Serrano side. Um, with Lucky and Lepke. Uh, Hollywood hangovers, methamphetamine, sex, and bullets over Broadway. Bullets over Broadway. Nice. Man, we got some... I, I loved... The, like, I love the the old school Hollywood shit, you know, it just paints such a cool picture of what Hollywood was like, you know, before my time, because I'm a Hollywood, you know, I'm a Hollywood drug dealer, <laughs> former <laughs> Hollywood drug dealer. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. The Southside episode had two dudes, <laughs> two cholos, and um, it's going to have two parts. And it'll have two parts. <laughs> two, two, two parts. Two episodes yeah. One special. part. Mm hmm. We Eat. couldn't fit. We couldn't fit all that gangster shit into yeah. one episode. Dos know what I'm hombres, <laughs> <laughs> such great guys. I was just tripping about how much Lepke looked like Francis Ford Coppola. I just was sitting there and I'm like, "You are just you're like one small, like tweak. Like I just if I put you in a polo shirt right now that's got a stain, a marinara stain on it, yeah. and just put a big wedge of brie in his left hand, you know, that he was about to eat with his with his fingers, then he would have looked just like him." Vegan Brie. Yeah, vegan yeah brie. I love vegan that they're brie. on the vegan shit. Yeah. Love that vegan So brie. cool. Um, cool. All right. Well, we hope you enjoy it. Yes. Uh, uh, welcome back to It's All Bad. Today, we're excited that uh, finally we got together with Lucky and Lepke, the South Side. Yeah. The OG side. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Man, we up with... here, man. We up here on the set, man. This yeah. is like, like we in Major the hood. Major production, bro. Like, 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 hey, homie, we in the hood, but we like in the hood, like, right, like brother. on the hood. Like, <laughs> we in the hood. Above the hood. Like, We're above the hood. Like the, I know the observatory is over that way. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, bro. It's all bad. Got it going on. You want to be on this show? This is like, show. like, wait a minute. They talking about? They talking about? They got? They got Randolph Hearst. Wood down there holding the, <laughs> half the house. Uh, oh, this look like one of these old motherfucking houses. This, this, this is like an old Marlon Brando house. This is though. like some shit, man. I don't know. Like it's tucked up in there. Like I knew right when we hit that corner, man. I told you the LaBiancas got killed right down here. Yeah. 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 Right? The LaBiancas yeah. got killed. And uh, the Frank Lloyd Wright house where they chopped up the black delight. What's it called? Dahlia. Dahlia. Yeah, Dahlia. Yeah, the Dahlia. Dahlia. That's down the street. Yes, like from right a lot down. of the. Yeah. I, I, I read a lot of books. You know, me being a. You know, uh, uh, someone that like, if you're young and you're listening, man, they, this all this shit might go over your head, but that's all right, man. We got a. Uh, I want to thank these gentlemen for inviting me in. All you gentlemen, the what now? What now? Wait a minute. The bad. What's this? The bad luck or the, the no luck or what is it? What they call it's it? all bad. It's, it's all, bad. all bad. Oh, we got yeah. a lot of all bad. But guess what? <laughs> we're trying to get better one day at a time. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we trying to get bad. mellow, not yellow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we trying to. Yeah, anyway, if you're out there, man, and you are, and you're struggling, and you might hear a little bit of something that might bring you to the to the format with us, you know. Yeah. Because if, if some youngsters are listening, you're out there fucking with that ecstasy or that new shit, that Molly, or whatever the fuck you got out there. I'm gonna tell you like this, man. You know, get it out your system. Now, like, fuck it, chew them fuckers like Mr. Cartoon. You shout out to Cartoon, Esteban Oreo, Big DJ Mugs, Be Real, Cypress Hill. We shouting everybody out, man. We gotta let them know. Uh, yeah, to Soul Assassins. Anyway, we just want to put it up like this. This, you know, we just let you know. Like I said, I get off track. I might, you know, like venture and talk about one thing, and I might skip around. And I don't know. I think that's what kept the motherfuckers in the jail amused. They were like, "This motherfucker's crazy. He just might be coming off, of, coming off that painter, painter PCP." Yeah. Yeah. See, we're excited, like I was saying man like if you're out there and you're young like i'm gonna tell you like this man like we're like you, we sound like we're young like somebody said uh, you know that dude sound like he's black well you gotta understand i grew up in the baldwin village which is known as the jungle and mm -hmm. uh, those of you that don't know where the jungle's at it's if you watch training day there's a few scenes in there where denzel had the shootout or they weren't shooting and that's where i grew up i was born 19 uh, august 5th 1963 and i happened to live on coco in august uh, the, you know, the street that's down there. I grew up right there. My grandmother lived in the hill. You know, they call that View Park. That's Windsor Hills. And when I was coming up, like, it was like when I was in the jungle, like, well, like when I moved up with my grandmother, what ended up happening for me is I grew up around a lot of, you know, brothers. You know, I grew up with the black kids, you know, so I don't know. They tell me I sound black. But then when I go down to the neighborhood, they tell me I sound like I'm Mexican. <laughs> so then, my, and I'm Jewish. So my girls, like, how the fuck, how the fuck do we got a Jewish... 
uh, Italian and you have a sombrero tattooed on your side. <laughs> you got Pancho V on one side. Yeah, you got yeah. the you know, Jewish star on the yeah, other. Yeah, you got the, yeah, you got like like what's going on? Like I one, was about to ask. Yeah, you a yeah, star yeah, I got the you know I got the I I yeah, like, I got the you know like, like 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 like. So anyway, I had a drug counselor once told me a uh, uh, shout out to Richard from Phoenix House. He was like, oh, you got a, 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 a crucifix around your neck with a cross with Jesus, and you got a star of David. That lets me know you're confused. I go, how am I confused? <laughs> I respect the Old Testament and I respect the New Testament. There it is. Oh, but I don't need. Yeah. I don't want to scare. Damn. I don't want to scare none of the listeners away. For you youngsters, like I said, man, if you out there and you struggling and whatever it is you're struggling, like you could have a food habit. I got the pizza sitting in front of me. I go by the Krispy Kreme donut. Like I could fix on some donuts. I could lust on some uh, porno. I could, you know, I could. You should I, call I, it prono. Porno. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know. Prono. But anyway, like too much of. <laughs> Anything is good. I'll tell you what, what I'm doing today is I got a shot of this coconut coffee. It's uh, this new thing they got at Starbucks, uh, coconut latte with uh, the blonde Verona shots or whatever it is. Yeah, Verona. I got Verona. Yep, there you right. go. Smooth. You got water. I got water and I got some more water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the pizza like that. I bet, so they went and got Big Lucky some of this vegan pizza because we're, we're, trying, Bombay, to, we're trying to do the plant based diet and. Uh, you know, and it's like, yeah, we just, in other words, so, so what am I getting at? It's like, we just change this shit in our life. Like, I stopped smoking November 27th, <laughs> and uh, so Lucky hit me to this plant-based thing. I tried it for a week. I noticed my weight was going up. I wasn't comfortable with it, but I talked to my doctor yesterday, and he informed me that he ain't ate no chicken in 25 years. And he's an army, like uh, a medic that was in the uh, Korean army. And he looks healthy, man. He's like an older guy and he might be pushing 70 or whatever he's pushing. But I needed to know, like, I'm asking the doctor what he eats because he looks, you know, pretty healthy. And he said he ain't ate no chicken in 25 years. And then the red meat, I'm kind of giving a break. But, like, I come off the cusk a little. You know, what I do is I cook up some uh, grass-fed ground beef and I'll mix it with just nothing but, like, broccoli and you know, a little MCT oil in it. And I go, you know, I do a little bit of intermittent fast because I'm 56 years old, man. For the people that don't know that don't see my face, I'm letting you know, man, I don't feel 56. I'm in the gym like two, three times a week, maybe four a week. Like if I if I, if I, if I don't go to the gym enough during the week that I feel like I'm getting, you know, like I like anything. I'm an addict. So, you know, yeah. he, like- Oh, was it when I met you? How, how old was I when I met you when we were in the joint? Man, we, we were young, man. That was we were 19, young back yeah, then, yeah, that we was met 90, each other. I'll tell you- I'm, I'm no. I met you the first time I seen Big Lucky, man. Was I was I, we were rolling down Melrose, mm -hmm. and this dude was in front of. I think he was probably a clothing store that yeah, you were Supermax. Yeah, that was a Supermax clothing <laughs> store. See. And see, Melrose is my hood. So as we're rolling, I'm in the car with. I remember I was in the car with my like we're just doing a little patrol through the neighborhood. So I noticed we're rolling, and I see fucking Lucky. He's like cholo, but he's got these fucking county jail fucking pull up pants with the LA <laughs> county jail. Like dude done stole the county. jail jail pants <laughs> and they weren't the dark blue ones they were the powder blue ones so those are the ones the trustee wore and I, this, this is how I noticed the dude I noticed him from the because I see the county jail pants and he had like this creased down shirt hair slick bag you know a few tag and he's standing there and everybody on the whole fucking corner or like like in the cholo mode and you know I'm from a Mexican neighborhood so I'm like this is my barrio and I'm wondering like I, these dudes don't look like my homeboys so these they got to be some either you know the enemy so I'm trying to hold my hood down I'm still in that frame of mind where I got to protect my hood and if you're standing on a corner represented but that's a lot of people don't realize that Melrose the way it looks now and the way it looked like 30 40 years ago was different yeah. There were no shops. All that shit was empty, man. Like, you'd go down Melrose, it was, say that word, uh, desolate, desolate. 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 Melrose was like that. Like, there was, you had aardvarks. And yeah, the, I, I think Aaron Records or yeah, had just, Aaron Records. like, there was, there was a few shops, but it was, like, just mostly the Hasidic Jews on Saturday would walk. And there was, like, nothing down there. So you're talking about around the time that I was probably doing a whole bunch of time in the pen. And I would either do the whole straight year violation or I'd go do a year or two or whatever. And I'd get out. And I was watching Melrose in Hollywood. It was changing, man. So I see Lucky on the corner. And he's surrounded by a bunch of dudes. And the dude that's rolling me explains to me, he goes, these are dudes that are, like, in the game that are putting like homies on the map that are that own stores that are putting clothing lines out that are working that are that's the first time I seen him and then the next time I ran into him we it was after the strikes went in effect March 7th to uh, 1994 
And I had caught a second strike. I had went in on a second strike, and I ended up falling into a penitentiary. Of the low, you know, it was a high level security before everybody was started snitching because they got it ended up getting a name called Tell It All Avenal. Yep. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yep. what happened was, if your points weren't all the way to a level three, like if they could manage you and they felt you weren't going to be a problem, you got sent to Avenal. Plus, they were sending anybody back in them days. They were sending you where there was room. Right. Yeah. There was no S N Y. There was right, no, right. you know, you were going like, like, like we felt okay. Avenal was a break. Like you're gonna get a yep, chance. Like yep. don't fuck this up. You get out there. So they put us on the yard where, you know, like out of the whole six yards, I felt all five of those yards were the the homies from the south side or yeah. the Sureño. Or oh you, fuck, really? Yeah. So the, all five yards were ran like that. It was like if you went to this yard, this was the yard that the Northerners and the Bulldogs had just started. Yeah. Right. So what happened is the Northerners. And the Bulldogs weren't seeing eye to eye, but we were supposed to get along with these Bulldogs. Like, right, everything right, was right. changing. Yeah. yeah. This was around the time, like, when I came back into the pen, like, the third or fourth, fifth time. I don't know. Like, I did a lot of violations on my D number. So what ended up happening, because I got five state numbers. I have the Youth Authority number of uh, 34592. And then I have a observation C number, which was C. I can't really remember that one, but then I had D three four four seven eight. Then I caught that J number on a, a on one of my uh, on my. I went back right after the D number. I end up doing more violations, doing over the six month violation on the D number, uh, more uh, than I did on any commitment. So it's like Fuck. I had the D number for like nine and a half years, and every year, <laughs> yeah, it was like. So they, every day, the lifers, when I'd hit the yard, they go, you're doing life like us. You're just on the installment plan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, like, we yeah. see, like, you get out and you come back. Like, yeah. you're not getting your radio back. No, we're not giving you nothing. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like you just got to go out. Yeah, you know, They were getting tired. So, yeah, I got, like, a few state numbers. And then getting back with what, what I was saying, I saw Lucky on the cruise. So I ran into so I'm looking at Lucky. I go, man, you look familiar, bro. I'd already oh. seen Lepke. Right. As a trustee in the county, though, right, I had seen him with dudes like China Man from Culver City and and just Big Bob's Taco and dudes like that, dude. All those big we dudes that the, were running we, through the right, county. But, yeah. now, and I'm younger; I'm a little bit younger, so I'm hitting the county at like nine, eighteen, nineteen, and I'm seeing all these big dudes coming out of the state that are doing your violations, right? Yeah. And I had seen Lepke because you can't miss Lepke. You got right. that old guy <laughs> and his glasses, bro, yeah. and he's so big, so you never mistake this guy. Yeah. And sure enough, I hit that yard, and Lepke's on that yard, and right. you know what? As earlier, like. Like earlier, and we'll get there, but like Lepke was saying, you kind of hear how he was raised with his mom. Yeah. And there was the part of West Hollywood that wasn't even gay. And there was a lot of like creative, artsy uh, yeah. actors. And it was like that world was around him. Yeah. A lot of culture was around Lepke as he grew up. And I grew up in a household, well, we're both Italian Jews, right? Right. So I'm Italian Jew too. Yeah. He's got some Puerto Rican in him. I've had to I'm tell Italian like Jew. 10 people, that, I'm like, his but, fucking but name is Luciano. 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 They're both Italian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my mother try was to, Jewish, my father was Sicilian. I try to explain yeah. the Puerto Rican <laughs> part, but nobody, like, even my girl to this day is like, you ain't fucking Puerto Rican. I <laughs> right, talked to your right. grandmother, and your mother said that your, uh, the, your, your dad's, your dad's mom is Irish. So I'm thinking, I, I'm fucking Irish. No wonder. <laughs> like, it? Like, like, I have an Irish, like, there's a woman that's Irish, and if you got an Irish woman and you got a Jewish mother, you're getting something like I know something like I'm tilted, man. I know. <laughs> like I'm clean and sober right now. Some of those dudes over there where where I where I manage, you know, I'm trying yeah. to. Find, I want to. I know why the one guy that gave me the reins to run the house did it only for a year. He goes, you know, why I'm getting out of here. I'm taking my sponsor's advice and only doing the commitment for a year because I'll catch a case. Yeah. Like, I'll strangle one of these motherfuckers. And yeah. I see what he's talking about. <laughs> like, so, like, 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 and I, hey, you know, like, I'm not lying, man. I have to, like, really work, like, so I, I'm sponsored. I can shout out to Kyle out there in Orange County, you know, a dude that I sponsor one dude, man. Yeah. And his name's Kyle, man. So, like, 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 he, and he tells me every time he sees me tripping or getting pumped up, like I'm getting pumped up right now, he'll, you know what he'll tell me? Huh. Patience, love, and tolerance. <laughs> Patience, love, and tolerance. Yeah. So, me and this dude, He's like the biggest South Sider on the yard. He's one of the right. bigger dudes on the yard. This is Lepke was, was pushing. He had some doves. Big dude. And so we start right away. We're like, right. what's up? We start talking, right? And it's like one of the first things we cross is like 
He's he's Italian Jew. I'm Italian Jew. So then we're just like, all right, we're instantly bonding on this shit, right? Because we're both from from neighborhoods, Mexican yeah. neighborhoods, right? Everybody's kind of tripping on us. And as I said, he grew up with a lot of culture around him. So yeah. right away, me and this dude start talking about actors and movies and classic film and like. And I grew up. I had a a mom that was a theater actress. Yeah. And she had lots of friends that were gay and. Or just just that were actors and off Broadway, and I was going to off Broadway shows when I was a little kid with my mom. She'd make us watch movies like uh, On the Waterfront and It's a Wonderful Life. And Real quick, Lucky, can you just tell these guys where you're from? I'm from Santa Monica, right? I'm from 17th Street, West Side, Four Corners in the house. Yep, I'm and from West Side. From... I'm from West Side Rebels, the big old original gangster Lepke. I got my name behind. Uh, I snuck into a Tony. I saw this, there was a movie in the 70s with Tony Curtis. And it was playing on Hollywood Boulevard and Wilcox at the Fox Theater. And it, and, it, and I, I seen the marquee, it said L-E-P-K-E. -E. And the dude looked like he was getting shot, like they were shooting him in the back. Yeah. That's, that was the, like the marquee. <laughs> and I, oh, and like I got drawn to that. Yeah. And then I waited at the exit for somebody to come out. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I used to also wait at the exit down a little ways because that was my thing. I, that's how I'd get into the movie. Yeah. And I saw the Charlton Heston movie on at the Pacific Theater on... The crowd right across the street. Yeah, I would wait at the exit because my my mother wouldn't give me money. If she'd give me the money, I don't know. It was it was like I you know I was living in Hollywood and I was you know a single mother that my mother used to sell a lot of drugs. She's a hippie. Used to go to the Lovins over here. So anyway, I wait. I'd wait at the exit, right? And that and and, and when somebody would walk out of the exit, I'd walk in. So I went in there and I watched that movie, man, in its entirety, man. I sit. And I observed the movie, and after the end of the movie, I, I fucking was like, like I, I was like, you know, I was a lonely kid, and I, you know, I was trying to adapt to something. I didn't have a father in the home, yeah. So I remember staying for the second time. I watched the movie like twice. Oh shit! And then when I left out of there, it went through my head like any kid, you know, that's not has any kind of guidance or influence, you know, coming up. Yeah. It impressed, and, it impressed right? It impressed you. me, and I go, man. And the thing that really got me is deep down inside, I know that I'm Jewish, and I know that we like coming up. It was like something we didn't broadcast in school, right? 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 Like I'm not like, all right, I'm fucking Jewish. Right, Guess right, what? Right, 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 so I'm right. looking at fucking Lepke, like he's the fucking. He was Jewish. These were Jewish mafia dudes yeah. in New York, like Once Upon a Time in America. Yeah, I just mm. watched that on TM uh, Turner Classic Movies the other night. So good. Yeah. Man, it's like something you watch. And Sergio you, Leone, right? Right. And yeah. if you haven't seen it in a while and you watch it again, there's parts because it's three hours and it's like almost four hours. And you watch it and, and you remember how good it is. Yeah. Like it fucking like if you really think about it, when that fucking movie starts, it starts like crazy. Yeah. Like it's fucking like, like, you know, so anyway. James Woods. Right. It's like, oh. I love that movie. Jennifer Conley right. is the little girl. She's like yeah. nine in it. They did that great, Perkins. man. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's a good yeah. movie, man. Yeah. yeah. So if you're out there. And a lot got... of small roles by fucking right. different yeah. people. And then, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. It wasn't Pesci. Pesci was in it. Yep. Pesci's in it. Yeah. Pesci's in it. Yeah. So, so yeah. this dude was identifying his. Right. He, he was he was standing on his Jewish. Jewish. Right. So I was like, and then like I, I push up a little further. So anyway, like when I, when I went to, I went to Emerson. You know, I kind of was kicking, you know, because when, when I was going to Emerson, there was a lot of Bloods and Crips, man. Yeah. And I gravitated towards that because they smoked weed on the back of the RTD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we would jump in through the window like we were sneaking on the bus. That's the first junior I went to Emerson. The schooling was different when we were coming up, Lucky. It was like, say you went fifth, sixth, four, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, then you graduated elementary at sixth, and then seventh, eighth, and ninth. That was junior high school. Right, they right, didn't even call it right. junior high. And then 10th, 11th, 12th. So I basically seen how the Crips were going, and I remember like Wally from Sotel, <coughs> and, and Wally was going there, and, and, and Sleepy from Sotel, and. Yeah. There was a lot of Sotel in Emerson because they would go to uni. So yeah, I, would, yeah, so I was cool. gravitating towards them too. Yeah. Like I would go and sniff paint. Like I one day I'd go with, you know, the the, the, the brothers and smoke weed with them. And then, you know, and then, and then, 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 you know, take the bus with them with Anthony Angarolo. He ended up getting into my neighborhood, but, you know, he, they called him Casper from Rebel. So I, his whole family lived down the street from me. And we were living, my family, my, my, my mother was living. On West Knoll and, uh, and and like Hancock, which is up by like behind, it was right behind uh, off of Holloway. Yeah. The mm -hmm. first 7-Eleven in, in the L.A. County uh, area was on Holloway and La Cienega. Yep. 
That was the first 7-Eleven. Really? Yeah. And then if you go down a little bit, that was Jim Morrison's hotel, which yep. is the Alta Vista. Yeah. yeah. That's uh-huh. where Jim Morrison and his and his production company was in the those old houses right there. Mm-hmm. I know all which, this because the bowling alley was Polar Lanes, which turned into Flippers. Mm-hmm. Flippers was a right, around the ring. corner of La Cienega and, then and it Santa turned Monica. In, yeah, then they made it a yeah, well, anyway. I was going to Flippers when yeah, I was I'm a getting, kid. Yeah, I'm getting off track. So <laughs> where was I at, bro? <laughs> well, we had met over there on that yard, dog. And so we, had, we started clashing on a whole bunch of things. We were getting right. along. We were like seeing eye to eye right. on like all this different stuff, dog. And we just started road dogging it over there, you know? We get, you know, uh, you know that yard every now and then it hit. And right. get a little something, something. Right. And we just started trudging together, you know? And shit, man, some, some shit cracked off on that yard. Right. I got into some shit on that yard. Yeah. And, uh, and it was with somebody from from northern the structure you know? they yeah. Were, yeah, yeah they were pushing they were they were blending them in little by little and we weren't knowing because they weren't saying nothing yeah but we were we did know like like right. like because yeah so was, i so i so i you know to get down with this fool was trying to get him to come into the building so we could get down and he yeah. did like a uh, he did like a pc move right he took in off the of me of the yard. right in front of the yard you know i'm having to tell him let's get into this blind spot inside come on inside and he took off of me so we got down whatever and when we split up and I got back to my building. I was like, "All right, I'm gonna let the homies know what's up, and we're gonna just we're just gonna you know handle our business, right? right? I let wanna, Lepke know, and they didn't want to let they weren't letting nobody out for chow. Yeah, right. So and they had come and wrapped me. They had come and taken me. Right. They, they got, come yeah. and searched everybody, and they see right. cuts. Yeah. So I go to the <laughs> hole, and this bu- and this dude, other dude goes. This Buster goes to the hole, and uh, so what happens is I'm gone now. But everybody knows what's just transpired. Yeah. And Lep's like my boy, right? Right. Yeah. And then what happens? So the <laughs> cops, they, they're they like, they don't want to let no one out. So we were walking around the building. You know, first first the blacks come. They go, hey, well, you know, like, like, like you know, the, these busters are tripping. What's up? I go, fuck them busters, man. They know what's up. Yeah. Like, 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 that, like, like, don't just say we're acting like everything's like, just be I, like out of respect for you guys. Don't worry, you know, like, like they go, oh, all right, all right. Well, well, they ain't gonna let us out to go eat unless, you know, somebody goes up there and say, well, I ain't going up there. Like, I, <laughs> so it took a while. <laughs> and all the cops came, you know, and they're like, hey, uh, uh, I go, I ain't running nothing on this yard. They go, well, we talked to the, the, this building and they said everything's cool. So they kind of basically let me know what to say. Yeah. They're like, well, <laughs> building uh, two. 11 said, like, the, there's no problem. And then building 210, they're letting us, uh, we're, we're in 210. Building 212 said that there's no problem. We just need to know, you know, if somebody, like, is there going to be a problem? Because I was your boy. We seen you always kicking it with him. Is everything all right? You guys don't have no animosity. And I go, well, if I'm the spokesman for everybody's decision in here, whether or not there's going to be any shit, everything's cool. We, you, we, you can open up your yard. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can yeah, fucking yeah. open your yard. Yeah. Everything's good, you know? Right. You know? Like deep down, and then like like as soon as they open the two homies, two youngsters come to me and they go, you know that shit wasn't cool. I yeah. go, no, I know. He goes, well, we're just going to act like, you know, and we're going to take it. Like everybody knew, like like you know, like you actually know that it has to go down. Yeah. But you don't really want to admit it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, like you're like, like, like you're, you're, you're like, man, I don't want, you know, but at the same time, you know, something ain't sitting right inside yeah. of you and it fucking just has to happen. Yeah. Like it's going to happen. Yeah. Like let's go see how we're going to make this happen without not knowing how it's going to happen. Right. All right. So we go eat or every, you know, you can feel it. You can cut it yeah. with a knife. Everybody, like, it's quiet. Yeah. Like, nobody's saying nothing. Everybody's on point. Like, usually when motherfuckers are bullshitting, it's like there is no noise. The chow hall is quiet. Right. Motherfuckers yeah. are like, like you're either trying to eat your last meal. Right, right, right. right. You know, or you're like, packing up all your shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. then we go, and then they're not open in the yard for that. Now everybody ate. Like, everything was cool. Everybody ate. So now they're wasted. So they come back again. They go, we need to verify it again. They're like, we're letting you, like, anything happens where you, you, you're you going to be responsible. And I go, well, why? You know, if that's the case, then you, then don't open it because I, I ain't got control over everybody. Right. Like, how are you going to set that into my lap? Like, like from everybody, all these gentlemen in here it's, are basically letting me know everything's good. Like, we're not tripping on it. Those dudes had a one-on-one fight. It's over. Yeah, it's squash. No problem. 
we get to the yard and you know here comes the youngsters again. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We ain't we ain't sitting <laughs> right with this. I go, all right. Well, what let let us know. So you know everybody's grouped up and then and I think they it started because some homies were solo from mm-hmm. uh South so, so Trece. Yeah, solo and a crew of them went over there and. And like we're talking to them, and then it's popped off, man. They were just going, so we had to run. And like when we seen it, it popped off on one side, so we all ran trying to go to the other side. And uh, I didn't make it, man. Them fucking cops came in, man. Like they were, they came out of like that fucking program office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, they yeah. were, like, like as soon as all that shit just jumped off, it's like I, I didn't. All I had a chance to do was run from one side of the yard to try to make it where the fight was, and the fucking cops were like already out. Shooting. The fucking yeah, not they didn't shoot. No, no, they, no, they didn't shoot. They had fucking ran. They had. Uh, the mace and the, the and the popper, like the dude, and yeah, yeah, the dude. I think they popped a, 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 a tear gas. A, the, the, yeah. the one canister went. Yeah, and, and and then they uh and, and they they were on the yard, man. They didn't they didn't let. They, I was they, heated, bro, and yeah. I'm in the hole, bro, and this right. the bus is on. I'm in there, and it's I get taken in there, and it's maybe like. Eight o'clock at night, I make it to right. the hole, and that hole is empty. Yeah, it's that empty. hole was empty, bro. There was like maybe tell, yeah, four or five guys right. in the hole, right? And it's like There's eight, no and, I, and now it's eight, and now now it's nine, and I'm wondering, right, man, what's happening? Like, yeah. did, did nobody like? I can't believe I went off this yard, and the yard hasn't taken off yet. Sure enough, because it must have had you guys on the lawn or something right. for a while, bro. Yeah, oh, Man, eight uh, hours. Yeah, dude, like they're like, like we're like, we gotta <laughs> use the bathroom. They're like, you pee on yourself. <laughs> what like, like, in the what? morning in the hole? All of a sudden, you start yeah. hearing a lights pop on. A yeah. Lot. And boom, they bring in a line of like fucking 30 homies <laughs> coming by and like 10 busters coming. Like they all coming. It's him, everybody, dog. The whole, we filled up the whole hole in Avalon, yeah. you know? And, uh, Lepke's down there and Lepke's but right. we're doing like they had us doing like a mini shoe program right. before yeah. you go off to go do your shoe program yeah. and they ended up putting like an inciting the riot on Lepke yeah, oh, they, they tried to give me an inciting Listen, a riot on me fuck. so yeah. let me tell you what happened so when I get the paperwork to that like Talk about a Rampart scandal. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, hey, listen. So I'm in there on a second strike. You got to remember something, man. Yeah. I'm in this motherfucker. Like, the last thing I want is to get any sighted yeah. hardcore 115 that states that I'm the fucking shot caller of the yard, that I orchestrated this whole thing, that nobody, that the dude that, like, the fucking cop that wrote it, first of all, he he hated us all. He was not a cool dude. I like to this day. I, I, it was like he would look at us. He had a look in his eye, like if I could plant some shit on you or set you up, it's gonna go down. So he writes in the one fifteen that I took my jacket. I didn't do none of this. He says I took my jacket off and I waved it above my head like a cavalry, like a cavalry, like, <laughs> like, like he, like, like I didn't do none of that shit. Like, like when I, I remember him because when I was running, he was running on the side of me, talking about get on the floor, get down, get down, get down. You know, so, and I didn't get on. I tried to go as quick as I could till some more cops, like, fucking surrounded. But remember the next the, yeah. the next night, the next yard goes off, and they almost killed the dude with hey, the bat. Like, 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 that set off all but, six of the, like, yeah, every all, yard. The whole joint oh, Like, like, like oh. from that one no. little thing, you had, so you got to remember, Avenal, yeah. there's six yards. All right, you have one yard, which is a reception yard. Right. I know one of the buildings wasn't cool because they had some dropouts. They had some, I've seen some cats with the Texas Syndicate yeah. thing on their arm. You know, they, they put it on the back arm, the T with the snake going through it. Yeah. And I saw two or three dudes with that. And I was hitting one of the homies up. I'm like, what's up? He goes, don't trip. We're not going to stay here. These are fucking permanent work crews that came from other joints that probably... Because what they were basically doing was in 1994, they were already implicating the fact that there were people that weren't following procedure. Yeah. Which is like, like if we're going to talk anything about politics, uh, you're not going to like get... Like, you're going to get the minimal of how we explain it because of the fact that we always have to respect the uh the jailhouse because the jailhouse in in a way that we do it we're talking we're sharing our experience based on what we went through to not put anybody out there but it was like the 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 this is why a lot of older guys that have c numbers b numbers a numbers and and uh these these older numbers what happens is is it was like it was cool to go to the jail in due time it was all right if you went in there and you were you know you were greeted like a family member and 
It was some place where you would meet up and you'd go do your time. But so around ninety four, when the strikes went in effect, and and a lot of stuff was happening where, like, they were starting to send push anybody to the penitentiary. Like, you know, it was hard to get. Like, well, back when I in the eighties, yeah, you had to kick some doors in to get into the joint. You yeah. like, you'd either do like a bullet in the county, or they'll figure out a way to like work with you, or you know, send you to you know. It was like hard. You had to like, like you had to get, you know, like me. I had already been to the youth authority. I had been to a few camps, and 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 so when it, so it was like it wasn't getting to the point to where it is now. Like right now, if you were to ask me, what's the difference between be doing time today and doing time back then? There's a way big difference. Like they're they're basically like like they're they're like you you're the normal joe and you and you're driving under the influence and you, and you can go like do yeah like your second time third time you're driving you know like the normal guys going to the pen like not the gang member the like they're basically sending anybody there and what they're doing now is california is um so multi the institutionalization is a multi million dollar enterprise. Yeah, and for the uh, ta- for the not not that the taxpayers have anything to do with, but they do. So what they have is it's a, a industry. Like there's a documentary I watch. It's called Thirteen. Yes. Uh, yeah. You familiar? You it's guys, great. Uh, yeah. The, that, that's, when, when did you start doing dope? I started shooting dope. Uh, uh, you know, my I remember my grandmother once she smelled weed and shit on me. Right, I came back and I had beer and weed and she, and my grandmother goes, I go, why are you mad, Grandma? I mean, I smoked a little weed and I had a beer, no big deal, mm-hmm. right? And she goes, that fucking weed is gonna, you're gonna end up, it leads to bigger and harder stuff. And I was the type of kid, man. That How I, old are you at this point? I was I was smoking weed. Well, I used to smoke weed, Mama. My mother, lucky, I used uh-huh. to. My mother fucking would like teach me how to roll, and it was cute to give a little kid the weed. You know, and I, was, <laughs> you know and I was trying to smoke it. I remember any time my mother would give it to me, I would like try to be cool uh-huh. and not really Hold inhale it. Together. it. All right. Yeah, like uh-huh. just like blow it out and be cool with my mom and her little buddies. Yeah, her friends up there on the. But pallet. you're really fucked up. No, I wasn't. No, I didn't get fucked up till I met my homeboy Alex Margia, man, which is part of a. Uh, his brother Freddie Marguia, uh, the end of yeah, that's a whole nother story. But I smoked some weed with him down there. The first time I ever really got high on weed was in an alley right off. Remember the Crest Motel? Yeah, the Crest on a uh, fucking Beverly. Yeah, behind the Crest, man. He lived behind the Crest, and he and he, you know, and he would get. He was from Bolivia, so he used to love weed. So he would, he would get that Oaxacan for ten dollars yeah. a lid. Uh-huh. He'd have like a pound of that shit hidden in the, the backyard, or, or some <coughs> ivy, and we were blazing up there, and the, and I and, and the weed hit me, and that was back when 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 fucking my mother was getting that Vietnam that shit from Vietnam, and those tie sticks they were twenty dollars for opiate a tie stick, for the, and that, for the young people by the way out there just just FYI a lid. Is, yeah. is, is an eighth. Most people, are, I'm yeah. sure they don't know, it's an eighth basically, right? right? Like yeah. two fingers worth of dope. Yeah, yep. you had you had the ten dollar yep. bags, which were the they were four fingers, and it was commercial Oaxacan, or and then you paid sixty for the Colombian gold, That's and that real fucking old. Colombian gold was fucking the bomb because back then, it's like a lot of like they got the strains now is like outrageous, but back in yeah. the, like you got to remember we're we're talking about we're talking about the middle seventies Maui Wowie. yeah that that shit was like. <laughs> That shit yeah, was right? yeah. That shit from Hawaii. Hawaii you were Hawaii paying electric. You were Panama, paying yeah, hey, Panama Hawaii electric. Red. Yeah, yeah, Panama, Panama Red. Red. Yeah. Kona Gold. All I know. Yeah. Yeah. Gold. That's old shit. Remember hey, hey shit? I'm all I'm all talking like I know. Like I was smoking <laughs> it at 34 <laughs> no, years old. <laughs> hey, hey, no, 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 no. You no, heard that? You heard about that? Yeah. Story. I was telling Charlie uh, the other day about just like the whole process, how much it has changed, how when you go to the weed store now and you get like crazy weed and it's perfect yeah. and it's insane. Oh, yeah. And like, but back in the day, you would just get like basically what seemed like something pulled off a bush. You have Unless to have an album you, cover. And then you, the seeds yeah, and that's exactly what I that said. Shit. That's what double albums were for. Right. Yes. So you could shake it down the sides, get the seeds out, yep. tilt. Yep. Disperse, mm-hmm. pull the thing. Yeah, my cousin taught me how to do that. But you had anyway, uh, like, back like, to you, like, gentlemen. like you guys got to realize that, like, we had weed that was two hundred and fifty dollars an ounce. Oh, back really? In the 70s. Oh, yeah. Really? No, no not lying, man. Listen, so that shit that was coming from Hawaii had yeah. no seeds in it, and it was light as a feather. So, like that, the Colombian gold, that being a full with twenty eight grams, is yeah. that an ounce? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Twenty eight. All right, so. 
You would so it, to like that. Sh- we were getting that shit from Humboldt County too. Remember that shit that was back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Wow. wow, man. We were getting weed like that. My mother was getting fucking weed that that was in, that 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 was that had traces. It was opiated. That chocolate type. I can tell you right. It now. was like hash. <laughs> I know almost. right when I saw it for the first time. And because I, I was smoking weed from Hoover and Pico, right? No, Mexican that was Mexican, okay? No, no. Right? right? Okay. All right. And I remember I was in the tenth grade. I was in ten. Escort out there. Yeah, yeah absolutely, bro. Escort eighty-seven. That was me. Yep. I was <laughs> that weed, and I remember I was in the tenth grade. It was nineteen eighty-two. Right. And somebody showed up with little cabbage, little cabbage, and they called it indica. Yeah, right. in the cabud, and yeah, it was we, like two, three hits, and it right. smelled like a skunk, and you were wasted, and that's when the whole game started changing. When that weed got introduced, that bright green, yeah. smelly skunky Dude, bud. What year was eighty two? You said eighty two. That's, that's yeah. what I saw it. And we call, remember we called it skunk bud. Weed skunk bud. Remember? That's what yeah. Yeah. it smelled like a skunk. It like yeah. a skunk. That shit that was, was a lot the, of money, bro. Yeah. That wasn't no sick. That was thirty dollars an eighth back bro, then. Yeah, that was the first right. good weed I'd ever really had. Because right. like, because right. I wasn't smoking when my cousin wasn't. She was of the Acapulco Gold of right. the of yeah. the of the Colombian and all that shit kind of era. And and I just remember being like eighteen or whatever and people being like this is indica and you were like what is that and yeah. now it's like there's indica hybrid sativa. right right no it's one a whole different that fucking shit. world indica just oh, yeah. meant great pot yeah exactly <laughs> green <laughs> yeah two hit three hit weed what yeah. now what was okay uh lucky let's start with you what was the first hard drug you did um the first hard drug i did was uh cocaine and i was uh 16 and somebody gave me a line. I leaned into the car, and this dealer, Richard, Richie, in Santa Monica, gave me a line. Yeah, I was in, like, the the 10th grade. Yeah, I was, like, 16, 15, 16. Yeah. And I did this little line. Yeah. And I remember, man, that line hit me, and I could not stop thinking about that line <laughs> for about three or four weeks until somehow me and my buddy Charlie got together and put together like 25 or 30 bucks and yeah. we went and got a quarter. Yeah. We got a little little bindle from him. Yeah. And we went and brought it over to his apartment building. We couldn't do it in the apartment. We had to do it in the, the laundry room. Yeah. Right? You know, the, the apartments have the laundry room. <laughs> laundry rooms are open. So we went to the laundry room and I don't know, he fucking pulled out a razor blade. It was back when you thought you needed a razor yeah. blade to press that shit out, dude. And he's really spending time over here and getting the lines right. And he makes out like four big lines. And I, right away, I just do both of them. Yeah. And, bro, that, that shit really, uh, really, really, really affected me. Yeah. Like, I, I was obsessed with it, like, when I did it. Yeah. And that just kind of, like, was at the same time that cr- crack cocaine was starting to hit. Yeah. And it was not long after that. I'm talking about within six months, um, I was with some some older cats that went to go score some crack where my mom lived. She lived over by Pico and Sherborne. Wow. And right down Sherborne, if you went to Cadillac. Yeah. So Cadillac and Shenandoah, Sherborne, they were selling crack. It was like a crack oh, supermarket really? in the 80s, bro. Cadillac, yeah. It was all Playboy gangsters. Right, right. Yep. And the so Methadone we Clinic was yeah, bro, <laughs> they were selling all, <laughs> Bro, they were selling rocks, real rocks. Yeah. And I went down there and right. they bought some rocks for $40. Yeah, yeah. They broke some up into a right. into a joint. We smoked the Primo. Then dude pulled out this like metal piece of a car antenna. Yeah. Put a rock on it, hit it. I hit it. Mm. And I remember two weeks after that, I had a warrant oh. for my arrest. And I had convinced my mom into giving me. Remember when they were $191, the warrants? Yeah. Yeah. You had to go down to Hill Street, and it was 191 She gave me $191. I never made it to Hill Street. <laughs> I, went straight down the I bought all this crap, yeah. right? And then I broke off two car antennas on the way home. Yeah. Because that's the only way I knew how to <laughs> smoke them, right? Yeah. Yeah, and fucking I smoked that shit, and fucking that set off like a, an, uh, you know, the next, the next like year, I really liked like powder coke and crack and smoking weed and alcohol and uh it wasn't long before that at 17 that uh you know one of my one of my older homies that turned me on to uh the heroin turned oh. me on to heroin saw those a lot of older dudes getting out of the joint yeah buffed up there were all the dudes like i idolized yeah i had just gotten in the neighborhood and and one of the older homies was fixing yeah and uh and I seen him fixing, and 
he just had it going on and it looked cool and he was like you want to try this? You want to do this? Are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, fuck it. I was kind of scared. And yeah. Man, he tied me off. And I was like, and I remember right when it was, when he was cooking it up and drawing it up mm. and like with the little cotton ball and, and he's drawn up and I'm like, I'm thinking in my head from those movies you see in high yeah. school. Like, Am I going to do this shot and die? Like, oh, and I remember as he like flicked it and got already he goes, are you ready? And I was like, fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Like, fuck yeah. it. Or I don't yeah. know what's gonna happen, but yeah. fuck it, I want it. And he shot me up with a speedball. Oh man, yeah, I remember uh, those. he shot I me up with a speedball, man. <laughs> and man, dude, like yep. that rush. And, yeah. And he's like, "Here's a cigarette. Don't yeah. get up. Stand Not by yet. your door." Not and I'm yet. holding the door. I'm like, <sighs> "Not yet." And it was like, "Well." And fucking right. when that high started coming, the, the next thing I know, we're sitting there, bro, yeah. on the le- Chase Lounge in right. his place, dog. And I remember saying right. to myself, "This is the feeling. This is it. This is it." This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. This is what I wanted. And I said to myself right then, I'm going to figure out a way to do this for the rest of my life. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. It was the... And you know what? Still, even... And and you know what? I don't want to say not glorifying right. because no, I'm talking glorify, about glorify. I am it's all bad. That That's the podcast. Right. Right. I'm fucking going to let you know it's all good. I tell you, man. Yeah. That feeling... Yeah. As as some people right. at this table know, right. there is no feeling like Nobody that. Nobody can do that. That like fucking Nothing. high right. is a deadly uh, fucking yeah, high, you man. Go, right, still to this, still to this very day, man. So, it's, it's sober time. You know, you I can find my head right. romanticizing, man, because that is there's a right. feeling to that, and there's a comfort to that thing, uh-huh. and this is why so many people die and so many people yeah, can't right. get off of it. But that's like. If I would have known what I was biting into on that first shot, right. man, it really is. We're addicts. We get amnesia. <laughs> you know, like, like, like. Let me tell you. So, so, like, for me, like, like, I'm gonna be real, man. It's like, all right. So, so, yeah. My grandmother was like, like, this weed is gonna. You're gonna shoot. You're, you're gonna. You're gonna go to heroin. And I was like, okay, you know. And I, so, for me, it was like. Um. Okay, so there was these brothers, like, like you, you know Denise Williams. Uh, you Denise Williams, she's a singer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, her yeah. ex old man was living in my neighborhood. They lived on Eleanor and El Central in Hollywood, right mm-hmm. below the Santa Gower Monica, Gulch, right? Yeah. Okay. right there, right by Gower Gulch, exactly. Yeah. So they, all right. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the hood living. You know, I'm, I'm fucking out of YA. I'm sleeping in a car, and there's a pad. Or some of the Rolling Thirties, man. They had like some OGs from the Rolling Thirties, Big Her, Big Merv, and all them. They they had mm-hmm. a pad right there. So the Rolling Thirties, what they would do is they use that pad to cut up the rock, mm-hmm. and then they'd shoot the rock up there to La Brea and Sunset, or Highland, or they, you know, so they would cut the fucking the the rock coke. Back then, it wasn't crack. Yeah, right. it was that they shit were that free base. you yeah. would fucking hit that. They had like uh, basically they had a crack spot in right, my hood. Right, right, right. So my homeboys didn't know nothing about it. I knew about it because I'm living in the hood, and I, you know, and I'm a fucking uh, I'm smoking like, yeah. I, I I remember the first time I hit the crack pipe. I hit it like, like I was with Lenny Bruce's fucking father's, uh, uh Lenny Bruce's uh, uh, lawyer's son. Okay. We were the first time that I ever had any type of uh, fucking free base was around the time Richard Pryor fucking caught on fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like right after that incident. That it's like I'm yes. sitting. Yes. Like I'm sitting in this fucking pad with uh, uh, Seymour Lazar's son. Yeah. Seymour mm-hmm. Lazar, if you guys pull him up on the internet, he was a lawyer that died in Palm Springs. Yeah. And he was under like an he was under an indictment, under an investigation. And I went to private school with his son. Like, like I like, can like like a lot of for the listener to know, man, I fucking went to school with Lee Remick's son. Yeah. I went to school with Christian, Marlon Brando's son. I went to school with like a few of the movie stars kids. I, I had ended up getting my mother ended up getting me. Uh, 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 I, c- I couldn't be in the private school because I was I, I was a uh, uh, I was a hyperactive kid and I fought and you know I had problems. So, so the dope the, house, right? So let me get back to the dope house. So, 
Yeah, so the first time that I seen the crack being cooked, I didn't know what was going on. Mm. But the, it was uh, J- Joe Blazar. Mm-hmm. They had cooked, so they had got a hold of some powder, and they cooked it, and they did it, you know, with the free, you know, the way you do it in the shaker bottle with the baking soda, and they, you fucking, and back then, we used to get the, the, uh, the uh, coat hanger yeah. and put the cotton ball on it and dip it in the 151. Yeah, and with the and it wasn't a crack straight shooter like Lucky's talking about. He, I remember that dope on Cadillac yeah. down there over there, on <laughs> Casino. What was that street? Casio. 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 That one. Yeah. Yeah. I remember all that down there over there off of Pico and La Cienega. So my experience was they gave me a little bit, and I remember I hit it. And I threw up. I remember I ran and threw up, and they never gave me no more because I was seeing they were selling that shit for like two hundred a gram. Fuck. Because nobody knew what it was. Right. That was before the CIA came in and fucking flooded the hood, did the fucking snowfall shit. Yeah. You know, right. that was, this was like, I'm talking about like, this was like 74 or five. Yeah. Around there. It was like, I was, you know, so I seen, I saw that process. I hit it. I knew what it was about. Moving up the fucking time. I'm in my neighborhood and they're cooking that fucking dope, man. And, they, you know, they're cutting it in their 30s. And then so these rolling 30s, their homies, their uncles, you know, uh, Big Herb and all these uh, uh, and, and Melvin and all these motherfuckers, they'd all be in the bathroom. Right. Yeah. Like I, I you know, like they give it like I, I remember back then I was taking the, the, the I was I was doing the primo. I was mm-hmm. putting it in the weed. Because that was where you either hit the pipe real good, which was uh, every time I hit that pipe, I would throw up. Yeah. Because the dope was like the cocaine wasn't like it is now. Right. You hit the pipe and you got nauseous and you didn't want it no more. You were fucking good for a minute. You were stuck. <coughs> but these guys were in the bathroom. I'm like, okay, well, something, there's more going on in this restroom, right? Yeah. So I had a, another homeboy of mine came and told me, you know, because then I had homeboys that were from my neighborhood that they would go, they would go down to Bonnie Bray. Yeah. They would go to Bonnie Bray and, uh, and, and 6th Street to the donut shop. And they were selling, back in those days, uh, the, the heroin was $25 a spoon. And four yeah. people could shoot that spoon and get either, you, you know, you get, get loaded. Well, yeah. You can get well and loaded. So everybody would pitch in. It was like by the time I started getting wise to it, they were twenty dollars spoons. It wasn't like like you had to piece in with somebody and then you had to drive. So what they were doing was they were shooting heroin in the bathroom, these brothers. Oh. Right? Yeah. So I would always like wanna know. So like one day, like everybody was sitting around, it was like there wasn't crowded, we were just all sitting there. And I told the um I told Melvin, I'm like, hey man, like like what like like I, he's like, no, we can't fuck you. Like, they didn't want to give me none. Yeah. Right. And, I, and I lied and said, hey, I've already, I, I've done it. And and I had money. And they were fucking sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, look, you motherfuckers are sick. I got money. And what's up? Make it happen. Because I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. You know, so they went. They got it. They brought it. There was three of us in there. They had the one back. And and they they pulled it up. And. And I and they gave me very little, man. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like they weren't like this fucking dope was strong. This was that like brown blonde dope, mm-hmm. and sometimes we'd get the one with the specks in it, mm-hmm. and then it was like it had it was like a, it was beige, and then it would look kind of gray, and it had specks. And when you hit it with water, and there'd be nothing left, it was like clean. Mm-hmm. So you'd hit it with water, and they Thank wouldn't you. like righteously cook it; they would just heat it. And it had a it, the the smell, the aroma. It was like I smelled it. And it was kind of like a burnt tire, but like a low key, like like it, it was a hard. It was like smelled like some type of medicine. Yeah, it had a medicine-y smell. Right. So I remember they barely left me a little bit of you know. They, it was a cotton. A little bit of the cotton. There was some in there, bro. <laughs> it was enough in there that I'm not even gonna lie. So they hit me, and I fucking felt the heat. I felt the heat good, and I fucking, I, I was more like, I finally, you know, like, I did something big, you know? Yeah. Like, like I did bigger than what my homeboys did, because they were still smoking Sherman sniff, sniffing paint and taking fucking uh, Quaaludes, and you got to remember, we're coming up in the disco era. Yeah. So there was Quaaludes. My mother was a farm, like, she, my mother, her old man was a pharmacist for Garfield Pharmacy in Beverly Hills. I used to go under my mother's bed, and I would see the the T's and B's, the tall winds and the Dordans and the, you know, the drugs that, that, yeah. that aren't on the market, the Desbutals. And back in those days, my mother was getting the speed, which was, it was methadrine, yeah. liquid. 
I didn't know what none of that shit was. You got to remember, my mother, she's getting the roar, the roar it was Roar 714, which yeah. were the Quaaludes, met the Kualun. Uh-huh. She'd get bottles of those. My mother was getting the Nebutals, which is what Marilyn Monroe did off of, and she was getting the Black Beauties, and she was getting the Benzedrine, the Cross Tops, yeah. which the homies used to sell in a yeah. row. Yeah. And they would sell the Reds, the F44. The, the, um, you, were you familiar with Reds? Uh, I never had Reds. Reds. Nope. For a lot of people that yeah, don't know what Reds were, that's what tops. Jimmy Hendrix, the cross tops. Yeah, those were good. Those were speed. So the Reds, <laughs> the Reds, like, I'm going to tell you. So if you read anything on Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix loved Reds. Because when he would be tripping on speed and that good, that really good LSD, because we had LSD too now. Right. We're not going to discriminate. Yeah. We used to go to the Tiffany Theater and sneak into the Led Zeppelin movie at 12 o'clock at night in the Rocky Horror Picture Show off that acid, that yeah. four way window pane. So let's get back <laughs> and uh, eat magic mushrooms. Like, yeah. it, like, like, like the drug. I, I, I know. Like when I sit back on my bed, and I lay down, and I start reminiscing, like what we're talking about. Yeah. In my own thinking, I'm like, that's one of the another reasons why you got clean and sober because the drugs ain't the fucking same. Because right. I, I had no problem eating a whole bunch of magic mushrooms and just kicking it and not having any problem. Yeah. Let me tell you, <laughs> I tell you this much. I knew that right. the sh- I knew that this shit was hitting me different. Because I remember the first time that I actually went to uh, like a, a social event with cocaine. Yeah. Right? And I went with a couple of homies and one of my homies was slanging. Yeah. So he had the bag and he's like, he gave me and like three of my other homies all eight balls. So we each had our own bindle, eight ball. Yeah. And we go into this nightclub bar, right? And we go in there and... We all order beer, whatever we're ordering, right? I take a sip off my beer. It's on the bar. I go, I'll be right back, guys. I head to the bathroom. And I go and I bust out and I do a bump in the toilet. Mm. Let me tell you something, bro. I never left the bathroom. <laughs> the whole I'm talking about we got there at like 11 at night. Yeah. At 2 o'clock in the morning. The only time I, I left was to stick right. my head out, bro, right. to tell somebody to get somebody else's bindle. Right. Yeah. Because I had finished mine already. <laughs> and I was in this stall and I'd wash my hands and somebody come in and we start yeah. talking. I spent the whole next. And, and everybody out there was yeah. having a good time, like drinking and doing their thing. And I was like, I, I took a mental note that. That shit was affecting me differently right. than yeah. everybody else that was doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really had a fucking hold on me. But, man, I was all the ways at, like, 32 years old, bro. I had gotten out. I was on parole. I'm dating this girl. I had gone out one night with some friends. I had been up all night. And I had kind of, like, already kicked and left heroin alone a bit. I yeah. wasn't shooting anything. And I remember, dog, I had pulled an all-nighter. And it was six in the morning and I walk into her house and I'm like, I got to be up at eight. So I got to crash out. And I, and I had been up doing lines all night with friends. And I remember at eight o'clock, she woke me up and it was one of those like, there's no possible way I can move. I'm not. Wow. And I needed this job and I was on parole and I just got out. And I remember trying to sit up and I'm just like, there's no way in my head was. I, yeah. I just couldn't bring it. And she's like. I got something that'll help you. Wow. And I'm like, what? and she, and I had only tried speed years prior and yeah. it did nothing to me. Right. I right. didn't lie. It did nothing. Yeah. I, go, I hate that shit. I remember. It did it. nothing. <laughs> and she fucking, she, she goes into her closet and I always thought maybe yeah. there was something going on with this girl. I just could not put together <laughs> what it was. She was a, she was a tweaker. <laughs> and I just didn't know her, right? She's always up and always going. So, so everything's always, always horny, clean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Horny, yep. And wow. so she, she, I'm feeling like shit. She tells me this, and I see her go into her closet, and she pulls out this thing, and she pulls this little baggie out, and she puts like a little speck out, right. and she like got a credit card, and she crunches up this little line, right? Little baby line, right? Yeah. <laughs> I walk over there, and I snatch the bag out. She goes, no, 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 and I fucking pour some yeah. more on there, and she's like, no, yeah. this is not like Coke. You gotta try. I go. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm a fucking big guy. Fucking. And so she yeah. does a, a decent line. <laughs> yeah. She's like, that's that's too. You don't need that much. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> that Burns like, gotta go down. Like, oh. oh man. And I and after the burn wears off, I'm like, I sit there on the side of the bed. I'm like, I think that shit wasn't gonna do nothing, man. Right. And I was miserable. And she's like, 
well, what are you going to do? I'm like, I have to take a shower. I have to. So I get, I pull myself up. The shit's not doing anything no. for me. I get into the bathroom. It takes 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and, I take it, and I start, I put the water on, I take a shower. And like somewhere yeah. in the next five minutes, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and she's like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, yeah. I ain't tripping. You know, I'm showering. <laughs> I'm like, bring me a beer. And like, yeah. I'm out of there fucking. And, and the next thing I know, I've completely forgot about anything that happened the night before. Right. Yeah. Any headaches. Any bad feelings. I go to work. And bro, I am on point. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, yeah. I'm having like a great day. Yo, hey, people walking in, I'm winking. Right, right. Not, I'm on point with my yeah. numbers. I feel great. Two you hours know? went by, you're like, Dude, damn. Everything is great. <laughs> you know, I'm like, honestly, like probably one of the right. best days of work of right. my life, bro, right? Focus <laughs> up. And yeah. I'm at and I'm at uh, uh, Enzo's right. Pizzeria. Right, right, so I'm right. Out, oh, my yeah, boy yeah. Paul's Pizzeria yeah, yeah. working. So I'm doing like a, a, a nine to five shift, right. right? We open up for 11, we do lunch, serve, everything's great. About, she's gonna pick, I need her to pick me up about six. So it's about five o'clock. Right. I call her, I'm like, hey, because I didn't have a car. So she's like, am I coming to get you at six? I'm like, yeah, come pick me up at six. Yeah. We'll go to a movie or so. Bring some more of that yeah, shit. Bro. With <laughs> she's like, all right, all right. All right. So yeah. she comes and fucking, bro, she shows up and as soon as she walks into the place and I'm finishing work, I'm like, did you bring things? Did you bring things? Yeah. I want more and more, you know? Yeah. And I'm still going. I'm still yeah. good, right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, but we'll do it in the car. I'm like, give me that thing. We're going yeah. to the bathroom. We're like, do a line in the bathroom. We come out. We're like, let's go to the movies. We start talking. Yeah. We're so we never make it to the movies. No. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Instead, we somehow end up over at like a... Uh, 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 a porno store. Oh, We're like, yeah. Check it out. <laughs> you right? kind of movie. Like, yeah. 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 Getting into the toys, all sorts yeah. of shit. Boom. End up over at her pad. And bro, it honestly, and I'm not putting anything on it. It's, we started fucking around at about nine o'clock. Right. Horn going on. Right. She's got the VCR. Like she's got the back when they were like VCRs. Right. She's like filming me, yeah. filming herself. I'm filming her. We yeah. got the porn on. We got this on. Yeah. She got toys. I, got yeah. I mean, full on right. fucking freak yeah. show. Freak right. show. Yeah. Her son's like staying with like the cousin or something for that yeah. night. So we're tearing her pad apart right. like, like jackrabbits everywhere. Yeah. There's porn yeah. on every room. Every, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm I kid you not. It is 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. and I'm dripping. dripping, and I've got this girl doggy style. I'm like, yeah. why? why, why? <laughs> it's 10 in the morning. I've been fucking all night, man. I'm like fucking John yeah. Holmes, bro. Where, where, I'm where thinking, is dude, and I've got a fucking my cocks with yeah, hard for fucking 10 hours. Right. It's in Venice. No, I'm saying no. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey man, it's a, the bed is like yeah. a giant sponge. Yeah, it's yeah. like soaked with sweat. Yeah. Like I gotta be like fifteen pounds lighter than of I course. was when I started. <laughs> on this yeah. Yeah. Right. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And I'm like, and bro, I had, I had been fucking the whole night. And they came once. The <laughs> and here it comes. Yeah, bro. yeah. Oh, and I'm man. like, hold up, turn over, hold up. Hold on, I'm like, yeah. like the coming yeah. to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, and she's like cheering me on. No, yeah. No, no, no. yeah. And man. Yeah, the Red Sea. Yeah. Bro, I had to pull, I had to pull it out right before right. because I need to see, see what, what was the about fuck's to happen. Bro, right? yeah. I wanted to see, man. Yeah. I was like, I know. And sure enough, I put it out. And I yank, and bro, she turns around and looks, and it's like a found. Like, I should, it was like yeah. Peter North, bro. Yeah. I just fucking shallowed almost up against the wall, through the yeah. wall, yeah. across the top of her head. Like, right. it was like a fucking sprinkler system. Yeah. It, it was the yeah. Olympic nut I yeah. busted. Yeah, 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 that yeah. I had yeah. been waiting to bust wow. my whole life, dude. Right, right. I never, right. ever, 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 ever right. had the, the shit. Now, the problem. Yeah. With all this, is that the way that 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 meth hit me? Right. What is that speed? Whatever you want to call it. Right. And the way sex was intertwined. Right. And that experience. Right. I didn't know. Fucked me up. Yeah. Yeah. It fucked me up, bro. Because I spent the right. next fucking trying to chase twenty that. years trying yeah, right. to chase that, that exact experience. Like night. it's that trick, right. man. Like the yeah. first time, like the first time right, I did right, right, coke right. or yeah. something. It's yeah. like this incredible uh -huh. fucking. But no, bro. You're always was, trying to get back. You're to always that. trying to get back, but and I gotta tell happened. you, man, it was fucking, it was gnarly. 
You know, it was crazy. But that was like my, and, and then, you know, I'm telling you right now, I was a fucking heroin addict, dude. Right. I was a dope fiend. And then in my early 30s, I get turned on to this shit. And then the whole sex thing, it's just like, yeah, I just wanted to do dope and fucking get freaky with this chick, you know? And it was like, yeah. it just started on that whole thing. And then I started fucking experimenting and slamming that shit. Right. And, and then I remember when you were out right. and spooks, and then we were all fucking around with that shit. And then T my that like oh, man, the next was, thing I know, it like it was bleeding over. I mean, right. I think that it was already like pretty heavy in effect, like where you're from. Yeah. But on the west side, it was right. like it was like everybody was smoking weed and doing coke. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this mess started coming into like neighborhoods right, on the right. west side. Yeah. It was like it tur- it started turning out everybody yeah. bro what year, what year was this you remember this yeah. is like this is yeah. like early uh, 90s early probably. 90s. well yeah but this when i got turned right. on to them was the early t- this is like 2000 oh, that it okay, started yeah. hitting the west side really hard yeah. i used to come out to lucky uh, uh to lepke's neighborhood <laughs> yeah i would yeah, come out we to hollywood there. and i i would go I, i've told you this before right. i would go to these fucking houses like in the hills and shit right. and literally like Every single person I ever met out here, you know, that because I went to Hollywood when I was a kid in the right. 80s, you know, but yeah. I get out of the joint and this, you know, this friend of mine, you know, from when I was a kid, she's like, hey, um, do you have any of that shit? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, there's no meth in Hollywood. And you know what I mean? When you think right. of Hollywood, I'm right. literally like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because yeah. in my they, mind, there's everything in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, back like, like it was when it first jumped off. Yeah. It, everybody like because I'll tell you like there was some spots the spot over there on Kenmore and Melrose uh-huh. and that building that Kenmore building on Melrose yeah yeah I had some homeboys in there they were uh, they grew up around some of my homeboys but these were white dudes man they were yeah. they were the Hollywood we call them the Hollywood they were the Hollywood dogs they were they're not no, no. Not, that was Shorty and them okay. I knew those guys no yeah. before them these dudes were more like they they all right this is our, I'm gonna bring you back to an era that that a lot of you guys around the table are, aren't gonna remember yeah but the meth actually took off and it was always in Hollywood there was a there was a it was a, a it was a, a restaurant where I was real young I was a kid it was called the gold cup and the gold cup was it was I'm gonna tell listen to what I'm saying and the gold cup was on Las Palmas uh-huh and Hollywood Boulevard, and a lot of hustlers. Is that where the Mexican restaurant is now? No, I don't know what's there. I know Mich- that, isn't I, that where Michelli's is at? No, Michelli, no, no, the no. Pizza? This was set on the corner. Yeah, on there's the, a pizza spot. This pizza spot, yeah. yeah. All right, there's that place, Mr. Car- shout out to Mr. Cartoon, where he started. Mr. Cartoon started at that L.A. Tattoo. Yeah. it's That's right directly on the corner. Oh, okay. So the <laughs> Gold Cup, that's where the Gold Cup was. Mm. It was a restaurant, and then then there the old restaurants that were there where it was the Gold Cup, and there was another restaurant called Arthur J's, and Arthur J's was on right where the Donut Time is on Highland. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. all right. Arthur J's we used to be Aaron Records moved up there. That's where Aaron yeah, Records uh-huh. was yeah, for yeah. a minute on Highland. Yeah, on Highland, so, just north of Santa Monica. Yeah, there was always the 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 the, the speed back then was a, a pill. It was a pharmaceutical oh, pill. Oh yeah, called Preludin. Huh. That was a bi sixty two. This was a pharmaceutical speed that a lot of these hustlers, because Santa Monica, there were no time. There wasn't too many trans uh, genders. Really? No, they're not that back when I'm staying. I'm talking about when I was a young kid and I was barely stealing dirt bikes and really wasn't even getting high. Yeah. And I remember that 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 was it was real seedy. Yeah. And there were there was like there were hustlers. There was like older men that were like there looking for younger guys and the younger guys they'd be out there on santa monica this was in the 70s man That's, oh. so there was arthur J's, and there was so the pill then was the bi-62 and there was a lot of liquid because my mother was selling it yeah and i didn't know what it was it was the liquid methadrine well so let me tell you oh, what year was it that you were t- talking about that, that well, you were coming up with the meth at? Well, I'm talking about like 92 and 93. No, well, mm-hmm. yeah, then it finally hit. Yeah, yeah the it, powder it, meth. Yeah, no, it yeah. hit. Yeah, because like crank, crank. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. Right, they well, were. Oh, go sorry, go ahead. So here's, here's the thing, and I've told Lucky this before. I'm not a big conspiracy right, theorist, right, right, but right. we all know that the government put the fucking cocaine here to yeah. annihilate Hell minority yeah. neighborhoods. Right, yeah. right, right, but right. here's. I have this theory, so here's here's what happened. I've told yeah, Lucky this. Let me hear. We had a 7-Eleven in Covina, right? Right, right, right. And 
it there's a McDonald's with a 7-Eleven behind it, so you can drive through it. You right. know what I mean? Like uh-huh. you could drive in there and right. out the side of the McDonald's. Right. But you could buy pot there. You know, like we were talking about earlier, just right. sesweed. weed. There's right. always heavy metal dudes there, whatever. You could buy right. a dime, right. blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, right. so one day these this dude drives through there, and he's about like, this is in 89, 89 or yeah, 89. And the dude's probably like 35. Okay. But these two dudes, we know Nick and Richie are there selling right. weed. And the guy had bought weed from him. He had bought it from him once before, but then he buys the weed and he literally threw the car window. He goes, right. Hey, you guys like doing speed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, yeah. But you know, at that time you'd have to know like a biker to get it. Right. It right, 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 right. You know? Right. Yeah. Like all the yeah. Riverside dudes. Right, right. Yeah. But he goes, get these things and I'll show you how to make it. Right. Right. They get these. Th- the first batch they made was in a fucking glass Gatorade bottle. Right. That's really? what they use for a flask. Yeah. Right. So this 30 something year old man's hanging out with these like 19, 20 year old dudes. Yeah, he goes back yeah. to the pad and shows them how to make it. Exactly. Right. And then. So he shows these two how to make it. They're trying to keep it on the DL. Right, right. But then, you know, their other friends are like, fucking show me how to make Is it. Is it like a, a serious process? Like, what's the process? That, Simple? At, at that time, it took about three days to do. Right, right. But by the time I got sober in 98, they had it down to about. So they were Six getting, hours. they were getting, really? the, what, what's that shit called? The veteran. They were, they, were, they that was available, right? Well, yeah, but at that time, right. the, the, the first batch they were just buying cold pills, right, Actifed right, and right. Suda, or racking them, well, you know? How many do you get, have to get to make a batch? To what? make one ounce would take about. About those cold pills. Yeah, about a lot. Like Cause you got to have boxes? A, listen, 50, 50 packs? Like yeah. yeah, yeah, you have to, like, wow. uh, like, I, like <laughs> I was fucked up one time with the cold. And I went in there, and the, and, the, and I'm looking, and the lady's like, no, nah, you got to get that over there. You got to show them your yeah, ID. Yeah, you got to show ID now. Yeah. Yeah. You're only right, going right. to get one or two. Yeah. Like, yeah. The most, like, you well, can't. Keith, then, Keith fucked it up for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So right. you would take it. It was a weird, because it's a pretty, you know, this is a pretty rudimentary right, process. Right, right. right. But a lot of me would steal, because they were pretty fucking expensive right. to buy. Right, 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 right. But right. You would take them and, you know, little coffee grinders like at the pad. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You would just put them in there and grind them. Sure. You know, right. and it takes forever because it's little ass coffee grinders. Yeah, right. And then you dump them in, in water and boil uh-huh. it. Right. Okay. And when it would boil, the powder, it would separate and there would be an oil floating on top really? of it. You. You'd pull that off with a turkey baster and drop it in the flask. Okay. And then you drop iodine crystals. Sure. And it's, a, you know, a, I can't remember the exact measurements, but the last thing is you drop the red phosphorus, right. which is what happens is it starts cooking and it's fucking violent. Right. Like yeah. you're sitting there, you have to keep swirling it, the flask, you know, cause it's fighting mm. to come up like a volcano and you're trying to, I mean, you're swirling it <laughs> right. the whole fucking wow. time. Right. Trying to keep it from popping out. Cause when it pops out, like uh, you're fucking getting burned up and uh, it happens all the time. Break right. your, breaking bad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but you're by, by hand doing that shit. Right. So what happened was that, I I started fucking with it, you know, on a date. Like, I was like you guys. You know what I mean? Like, I'd fucking right. chip. I'd go on right. a little three-week run, but right. I was just drinking every day. Eventually, right. when it got me, it was like 91 or 92. 91. Right. And I start doing it, but I'm at that pad, and I'm looking in the garage, and there's like the two dudes I'm talking about. Right. The older dude who showed him how to make it, and then two more of my buddies there. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, fuck it. You know, Covina's a small town. It's yeah, one square yeah. mile, but I'm sure. like, and I'm looking, and I'm like, Everybody here is from Covina yeah. and roughly the same age within a few years, except that dude. And wow. I look at my partner and I go, where the fuck that dude come from? Right. And he's like, oh, that's fucking Matt or whatever the fuck right. his name was. Right. And I go, that's not what I'm asking. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Go, right. What yeah, I'm asking is. Yeah. yeah. I go, who fucking knows him? And they're like, well, you know, we're both, we're high granted, yeah, but, yeah, I, you yeah, know, but right. I'm not being, per- and I go, I go, you know, like, it's like you two played baseball together. Right. I've known Nick since from the punk rock scene. Sure. I went to high school with Troy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right, right. All this, I go, Troy's sister dates Richie. You know Every, what I mean? Right, Everything's right. tied in. Everybody has Where'd roots. Where'd that motherfucker come exactly. from? Right. And, and like, he's like, and he's like older. Yeah, he's like 35. Right. But How old are you guys? I'm 50. At, no, the, no, time, at the time, I was no. 21. Yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. We were all like... 20, 20 so, to 24. Something's out of place. Right. Totally. Because right. I'm like, I, and I'm like, and I'm like, I, I was like, and then I, I got busted. I go to the joint right. and I started, I was talking to another dude in there from Covina, but I'm like, oh. Hey, do you know that? You know, that fucking dude. Right. And nobody blah, blah, knows. Blah. And I go, and yeah. he goes, nobody knows him. I go, okay. You don't think it's fucking weird that uh-huh. in the early eighties, 
all of a sudden, because like if you have powder cocaine, right? Right. And you want to turn it into crack, we all know right. it's a chemical fucking process. You got to right. sit up with somebody yeah. that knows what the yeah. fuck. Somebody yeah. has to know. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But all of a sudden, like cocaine's doing fine. Right. right. But all of a sudden, every fucking minority neighborhood in the country is right. flooded with crack cocaine. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody's what cocaine. the fuck? I mean, yeah. and it's everywhere. It's right. abundant. It's not hard to get like it was in the 70s. Nope. So then. That shit annihilates everything. Right. It's everybody fucked up, doing burglaries, yeah. getting caught the, with the, possessions. The, the, the A-track was cheap. Yeah. yeah. Well, they already rocked, or they, they sell you the powder, or they, they call it the hard teenager or the soft teenager. Yeah. yeah. That's how we would but call it. But the thing it is, you yeah. flood those neighborhoods, and it fucking annihilates everybody. You right. know, everybody who wants equal rights and sure. all this kind of right, shit, right? Right, right. So then, this shit, right. I mean, and it started in Covina and San Dimas, right, right, you know, right. like, and- and it, uh, the more I kept thinking about it, I go, wait a minute, because I'm talking to old like biker dudes sure. in the joint. Yeah. And the way they made it was that P2P way, the old way. Like, how, dope, like how, dope, yeah. how were they doing it? Like, they, propane dope, right? Yeah. Uh, so they were doing, their process was more advanced. Way more so Of advanced. course. They made like the shit like right. the Nazi do. It's probably right, right. similar to the pills that your mom had. It's right. probably that. Yeah, yeah. It's a way different process that's made out of this. I think it's called phenyl two propanol. This right, weird, right, right. It was different. Yeah, it, yeah, there's no. But then, so I'm I'm sitting in the joint and I go, "Fuck, man!" I go, "Wait a minute." Once again, right? Like this shit's just wiped out every fucking white working class right, neighborhoods, right. right? Yeah. And I go with the but like even us at the table, you know, this is before the internet. Right. We couldn't figure out like somebody figured out how to make that same thing. Yeah. Out of fucking cold pills. Yeah. Yeah. That we makes that. no sense. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, and I'm like. And then I'm like, you know, and slowly I'm watching, you know, like people's parents are doing this shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Vacuuming late at night. And I'm like, right. these motherfuckers are putting us down. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, it, it's simple. And, you know, the majority of the dudes I'm growing up with are right. fucking going to the joint. But, you yeah. know, yeah. meth labs right. or fucking burglary, but whatever. This man, I'm telling yeah. you, bro. It, 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 and I do believe it started over there because I remember in the in the. Like around like ninety seven, I'm going to the joint, right? right yeah, right. We're, yeah, we're in the mix. Now this is before I've tried meth. Meth yeah. in my mind is like a Hell's Angels right. biker. Right. White dudes do that. You got to be <laughs> white to know about that or trip on that or yeah. whatever that yeah. is. I had no idea. But I remember getting to the joint and all these different homies from like Azusa. Yep. All you know, these different Baldwin neighborhoods. Park, yeah, Elani. fucking right, right. Uh, Lomas and stuff. Yep. So all Gabriel these dudes Valley. are coming yep. in. They're telling, all these, they're telling all these stories, bro. Right. They're up. Up, up, up. Like up for 10 days. Up yeah, for this. Up for that. Yeah. Tweaking. I'm like. I'm like the Monte uh, Flores. Right. Yeah. All that, yeah. dude. These dudes are all in there yeah. behind fucking yeah. meth, dude, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking where I come yeah. from over on my side. They're selling birds and yeah, it's coke, yeah, and it's, yeah, some, yeah. some people are smoking coke, but it's coke and PCP, weed, and, and then you yeah, got all these that do dope, and you got to go all the way to like Hawthorne and Eaglewood right, right. to cop heroin, yeah, you know, you or yeah. downtown Inglewood, LA. Inglewood. Yeah. So I saw it all happening there and bubbling, yeah. and I remember, man, by the time I tried it from this chick, it still in my head was like this like white thing, yeah. Right? But I also knew that different homies in like different areas, yeah. were doing it. And like, remember like Chivas and, and Artesia and all that? Man. Them dudes all had it. Yeah. Man. And we were tripping. The homies on the west side yeah. were tripping off those dudes because they were doing speed. Yeah. Like yeah. We didn't understand right. it. Yeah. And, and it was weird, man, because I saw it right. start to like, that shit turned into a monster. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it everywhere. Fast. It everywhere. moved fast, bro. It, I got out of the joint. Right. Like, I, I, I had par- paroled, fuck, I'm going to say 94, 95, but uh-huh. I got out and I can't, you know, I ran into... This essay at the parole office. Right. I knew him from. You Which know, parole office were you going? I was in Baldwin Park. Oh, cool. But I get there and I'm coming out. It's this dude, Devito. Right. Devito like, from uh, Puente? No, uh, Devito from um, oh. Irwindale. Right. Well, you know, Either Vito. Way. Yeah, that fool Vito from Puente, he got life. Oh, no, I don't. A lot of them do. Yeah, I got. Puente. Well, yeah. the funny thing about you guys being Italian essays right. is. That's how I got sober. The right. dudes from Belinda. I don't, Smokey. Belinda Flats. Yeah. That's an old neighborhood. Yeah, so Smokey yeah, from yeah. Belinda Flats, right, right. who's one of my... He's a, an Italian. Yeah. You probably know him because he worked at Mahoney's place. Right. You know what I mean? For yeah. the first few years. I might have met him. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. Tony Bramucci, but yeah. he he's the one who... They smashed me and made me go to fucking rehab. Right. Because I was just on scandalous. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. But he saved my life. But um. So you know Mahoney? Yeah, I've known him. Does Mahoney listen to your podcast? 
I don't. I haven't even. I haven't talked to him in a long time. But he's the one who helped get me into the impact. Exactly. Yeah. Shout out to Mark Mahoney. Yeah, Mark Mahoney. Yeah, I owe you an amends. I'll be up there to see you. And he was the, right. like he helped me out a lot, man. He was the first dude I saw get right. sober. Yeah. Know? Oh, I was in Cry Help with him. Not to yeah. bust his anonymity. Yeah. We went through Cry Help to Jack, the house that Jack built. Yeah. You know who Jack Bernstein is? Yeah. Like we could really get into like when we you know like I don't know how long is the podcast. I don't know, but. Oh, you're yawning, bro. You need no, some coffee. No, no. What I was going to tell you was like. You want a coffee? <laughs> There's an espresso good. machine I, in there. I, I, remember going down, I remember going down. Man, something about the needle, bro. You start the needle. shooting fucking heroin. Yeah. And then when there was right. no fucking dope around, yeah. I just shoot some coke. And yeah. I just want to. I remember the years oh, where I was just sprung man. on the needle, bro. The fucking just sprung yeah. on the needle, bro. You know what I'm right. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't even see an orange top. Right. I'd get my stomach to get all right, fucked right, up. Right, right. And if I ran into some syringes, man. I was getting high, bro. I find yeah. a way to get whatever I could to we, shoot it up. We were getting that coke that had the ether. in Oh yeah, bro. You yeah. smell yeah. it and taste hey, it. Hey, we go all night with go. that shit. But you know what? I remember going down to like Crazy Riders neighborhood, bro. How about at the Sears? Yeah, Hollywood. I'd be yeah. up. I'd be what? Up. I'd Sears. Be... You remember Sears? Yeah, yeah. the big yeah. one on Santa Monica. Yeah, we're in the back there. That was Coke Alley. Hey, bro, man. I'd be going really? up there at 12 25 midnight. 25 fucking dollars a paper, bro. Oh, I didn't know you, that. That fucking shit would have you puking. Hey, bro, I'd go about... up there to Alvarado Crazy. <laughs> I'd go up there to Crazy Riders neighborhood. Right. Mamacita, oh, right? I'm hook you up. Who was the homie that was in a wheelchair? Go, uh, Oki. Oki. Shout out to Oki. I'd go see Oki and them. <laughs> and I'd score some Coke. Oh, he gave it to us. They'd take me to the back. And we, I'd be shooting coke They'd help us, from yeah. twelve midnight you, you'd be until down like there seven in the morning, yeah, bro. Yeah, in their hood, standing in, in their, their hood, neighbor. shooting coke with yeah. a bunch of other dudes. Where they're warring, five, yeah. six, oh, you're enemies? Yeah, no, 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 no we weren't no. enemies. No, but, but they're warring and, with yeah, fucking yeah. five or six hoods right there. So you know, you you get you get your cabin. If you're standing with them, they're not gonna be like, yeah, oh, you're, you're from Santa Monica. You're from separate. Shoot all these motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly, bro. It was crazy, bro. But what I was getting yeah. at was that I would be down there and like, I just remember, man, Lep, you, you, you'd hit it hard, bro. I caught some bullets bro. for you, the listener. But you'd hit it hard, bro. You oh, go, you go straight bad, to bro. it, bro. Hey, let me tell Can you. Can we hear this a story about you goes, getting shot? Look, oh, I'll give you a little bit of that. But listen, let me tell you something. First, first of all, when I'm on a rampage, yeah. Yeah. like I say, man, I, I, like, I, I'm, I'm amongst you. Are you guys filming? You got me on camera? I sit amongst you not as a man, but as a miracle, man. I need to always push that out there. That whenever I share anything on a podium or on a podcast or anywhere, whatever I share to you and I let you know that I am a, an example of something higher than me that does not, it's not my own doing sitting here. I have fucking like, man, I'm talking about like there is like, like I live to get high, man. I lived. I would sacrifice my mother's belongings. I would steal everything in the house, which my mother got smart, so it was hard for me to do anything. I would take anything. I would fucking help you look for it. I would do like, <laughs> like I would like, like, like I would rob like myself. I was robbing myself. Anyway. <laughs> Let me down there on San Julian. That fucking cocaine, fucking, man. Yeah. I remember shooting the powder, man. We were, they, we were getting it at Sears. It was, it came a time when we were like, like we would, that was more like, that was around when the fucking CIA pushed that shit because it was powder mm -hmm. and it was good. And you could either go two ways with it because you were either buying, you know, and it would cost a lot of money because we were buying a paper for 25 and that shit had ether in it. Yeah. And you'd shoot it and you would fucking hear a bell. Yeah. Like this Mexican Coke right now that like, I seen the ass end of some Coke cause I got some on St. Julian. Yeah. On one of my last runs on Skid Row. Yeah. And you know what? I was... That powder they got now is trash. So what I would do is I'd get a hold of some good fucking crack and I'd hit it with some lemon juice, man. Yep. And if you fucking put lemon yep. juice on that crack and you that's you're separating what you're doing is you're taking all the byproduct out of mm -hmm. the crack and you're actually getting a good percentage of cocaine. And I me and this dude from V and E, we knew how to do it perfect. You know? And we were doing the speed balls like that. And the coke, when you do it like that. The, you don't get paranoid like the other coke, like the powder coke. You'd be paranoid, bro. Like I'd be like you, you know, like the the two worst things in the world to come off of is being rejected from a woman you're in love with, mm -hmm. coming down off of the speed, and coming down off of that fucking powder cocaine. Yeah, I've never felt anything in my life so. I mean, I was in the county with a dude. I don't want to put his name out there because he's got a lot of you know, and he was there, and, and they had coke, man. 
and I was a trustee and they were giving me the coke and I was fucking, I, it came to the point where, and this is a dude that, you know, like a dude that we can't mention on the, yeah, on the serious on, dude. Yeah. And serious dude. And I told him, just give me a little bit more and hold my glasses. I had him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you already owe me fucking $50. Like go down there and bring me some store. Like he was yeah. a, Back, you know, for for the listener, yeah, but this was back in the ninety five hundred days in the county. So ninety five hundred was a, a, a an shoe intake. city. Yeah, it was an yeah, intake yeah. shoe city, money bag city. Yeah, shout yeah. out to you guys listening to the podcast. We're gonna go up the hard luck show. I gotta give a shout out to the hard luck show. We're yeah. going up on yeah. Saturday with the uh, men's central. The corruption. Yeah, we're gonna talk about you the are. Central yeah, jail. we're doing yeah. one. Yeah, wow. just so you guys wow. know, we're gonna go. So like this, basically, this format is we're jumping around with like so many. So you guys are getting like a gamut. Of of what we're sharing about. Hey, tell them about the tell them about the running through through Hollywood the dude, robbing the motherfuckers for dope. Which one? Say it again. Which one? Oh, what what which one? The first one. Oh, they yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, tell them the first one. Keith wants to hear. I want I want you to know something, Lefty. Right. I, I want you to know something <laughs> yeah. here because I've I've known you for right. since I first got sober. I met Lepke a few years later, right. and I'll tell you the sweet, the raddest fucking thing because. We all know it's right. like, you know, it's fucking savage. But I've never, I'll always remember when I'd run into him, I'd run into fucking cartoon, right. I'd run into Esteban. Right. And I'd always be like, how's Lucky? How's Lucky? How's Lucky? Lucky's yeah, good. Yeah, Lucky's yeah. good. The yeah, next yeah, time yeah. I see him, yeah. Lucky, nah, you know? But yeah. your homeboys, all, I swear, man, yeah. they fucking never gave up hope. On e- either of you, it's no, fucking yeah, magical. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know? Yeah. 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 But, yeah with, sorry, go ahead. With me, uh, 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 um, yeah, I was. Re- I got out. I got comfortable. Like that's one thing for an addict. Addict, once he gets comfortable, is not a good thing. Yeah, mm. you know. And I'm letting you know, like the the, the listener that knows that. Uh, yeah, I ended up getting comfortable, and uh, I was smoking a lot of crack. I was drinking. I was shooting a lot of heroin. You know, the, my, what my, year is this? This is ni- 1992. Right, 92. Right in Hollywood. 1992, man, Hollywood, man. I had just got out again, once again, on another violation. Um, I had already, I had done, uh, the first time I went to the penitentiary was in 80, the end of 85. I ended up going to the, you know, uh, to, to, to Dracula's castle. I got out. I did, that's the time that I'm telling you, I did all that fucking installment off that D number. I did all the, uh, the violations a year or better. Or, well, you know, a year, but I didn't know. So anyway, I got out. I had just got out from doing uh, three years on the sales. They caught me in little TJ over there by Leland Way, mm-hmm. down in there by Hollywood High. That yeah, was uh-huh, there. yeah. Back that was a weed spot back in the day. A really? lot of people, yeah. It was like, and I had a lot of homeboys. That's around the time when we were getting the grams of heroin for thirty dollars. Yeah, we were getting the grams of tar for thirty. There was a lot of powder coke. There was a, we were shooting. Everybody wasn't snorting no more. We were smoking fucking cocaine. We were shooting powder coke. We we're doing the Belushi's. We weren't fucking with no meth. There was no meth in the equation. Right. The meth was down here with the white boys. Right. The white boys had no meth. meth. No meth. Like we didn't want meth. We were fucking right. trying to shoot coke and heroin. And we were smoking fucking crack in the hotels on Sunset. And there was fucking prostitutes up and down. And it was like open, you know, like it was corrupted, man. Right. The fucking Hollywood division, Rampart division, they were just letting shit happen. The Pussycat Theater was fucking showing porno. Not right now, if you go there, it's called the Tomcat Theater. They're showing <laughs> other shit. But, <laughs> and then there was massage parlors. Like this is the ass end of the massage parlor era. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I was fucking comfortable, man. I was shooting dope and and uh, and I was taxing my homeboys, man. And my homeboys were selling a lot of crack on El Centro and Eleanor. They were down there, and they had TMC was in the middle. They fucking pushed them in the middle because a lot of people don't know that TMC is uh, like a part of my neighborhood because of the we're the older clique and they were just taggers. And I don't want to get into that. Yeah. So yeah. what ended up happening was. Uh, was I was uh lots of crack sales. I was Hollywood doing yeah. Thing. I was shutting my like like what I would do is I would wait up and I would catch the people that were coming in to buy the the. I was I was uh, in other words my homeboys were losing money to, when I was out. So what they were doing was like they were basically like like trying to because I'm an older homie and it was getting it was getting bad but it wasn't to the point where I was looking homeless. I still had good shit on. My mother was still letting me you know use the house. You know, and she was she was getting to the ass end of not putting up. With, she knew something bad was going to happen. You know, yeah. she was just worried, a concerned mother that didn't want to shut the door. Yeah. So basically, I was living through my mother's house. I had a few spots going, 
but I was doing a lot of drugs, man. It was a dark time of my life, man. And uh, and my homeboys got at me like on a on a on a respectful level. They put me aside and go, "You're our older homeboy, and we respect you, and and and, and we know you're shooting heroin." And 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 you know they had a meeting, and they and I this is what I was told that they they said anybody that gives me a ride to downtown LA that contributes to me getting in the heroin, because I'd get so high on heroin, I'd have to come out of the heroin nod, and that and, and that consisted on smoking everybody's crack. Yeah. So it, my homeboys were, I was, you know, like, like, and then it got, you know, so one, one day one of my homeboys just straight out said, hey, homie, like, like, why don't you go to another neighborhood and tax them? Like, you're over here taxing us. <laughs> and I got, a, a light went on, like, what, you know, hey, you know, yeah. hey, that, that sounds good. Like, then, <laughs> like, 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 right when that fucking light went on, it's yeah. like one of the other little homies pulled up in one of those uh, Trans Am, I rock, like a nice, <laughs> stolen car that they had you know, that they had been yeah. around and I go hey come here and it, hey I, I need a ride and he's like well, where are we going and they're like you know there's an old there was an old thing about me that like if, if, if Lepke asks for a ride don't don't let him in the car yeah <laughs> <laughs> The homie goes like, I want to make some money. Can we? Where are we we're gonna go make money? I go, yeah, we're gonna go make money. Go down here. So I took him. The first neighborhood I went to, uh, uh, I went to, uh, I went. As a matter of fact, I didn't go into a neighborhood. I went to Hollywood Highland and Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. When all those spices were selling that bullshit dope, <laughs> like there was just spices running rampant around. Right. That On side, Hollywood though. Highland. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, it was bad. Running bro. up to the cars. They were running dope. like they were all. Like that, the, it was a bad time. I'm telling you, the year was 1992. Yeah, it's like everybody up there had this fucking bullshit dope. It was crack, but it was like bagged. They had it like, so I went up there and I robbed a whole bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> really didn't rob. Made them think I was buying it. And when they would drop the dope in my hand, I would just jump in the car. Yeah. <laughs> and just go around, go to the next street, jump out, and then get a few more. So it's like by the time, like like within a ten, a five minute or ten minute period of time, I got like fifty or sixty rocks. Yeah. That they're up there selling like dimes, twenties, whatever. Yeah. So the dude looks over at me, he's like, Man, I don't smoke that shit. I'm like, Don't worry, homie, we're gonna take this, we're gonna give it to the homeboys, and they can sell it and we're gonna make money. So let's go over here. So he goes, Yeah, but I would try to I go, cause it's hard to rob a motherfucker for his money. It's easier to get him to drop the dope in the hand. Yeah. So yeah, we're going <laughs> and you know, so I so I got you know, I go up there to Cherokee by Musso and Frank. Yep. Right behind Musso and Frank in that Cherokee building on Yucca or that's Selma or Yucca, that's uh, uh Selma. Selma. No, Selma, yeah. That there was a uh, there was a spot up there where they used to sell that that was Hollywood uh, 18th Street up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I went up there, man, and I, I jumped out the car, and it was a dude right there that I knew he knew me, right? And I, you know, that's but you know, about around that time everybody was trying to be cool because there was a lot of money to be made in Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood was like a lot of money, you know. So I jumped out of the car, and it was, it was getting late. It was like in the 11, 12 o'clock, and he and he had some. I don't know. I go, what do you got? And he goes, I got this last little bit of the last of the. Of the half ounce that I've been breaking. So what it was was he had a bag that where he probably had a big golf ball of dope in there. Yeah. But it was bra- it was getting small. Yeah. So it was a bunch of crumbs. Yeah. And he's like, here, give me a hundred for this. It's all crumbs. And if you guys know, if you ever fuck with dope and you have one of those sandwich bags. Yeah. And when it all balls up into the corner. Yeah. And you take it, there's a lot. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be like a gram and a half in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of all loose dope, like crack. He already had it rocked up good. Like. Different kind of dope. It wasn't that shit that the Paisas had. Yeah, on. Right. Right. So I got so I got that in my hand, and I told him I'll be right back. And he's like, No, 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 fuck that. And I'm like, Hey, homie, I, I got you. I'll be right back. And I'm jumping in the car, and the homie's like, Oh, some more. So that you know. So they're coming out from the back. Hey, hey, you can't do that. Come here, Kiger. Come back. Come back. I go. Yeah, I'll be right back. And then you take off. <laughs> so I, I go. Now I'm taking. I'm, I, I, I go over here to Western and Hollywood. And I'm thinking, that didn't look too cool because <laughs> that's white fence. And I'm like, yeah. I might not be so lucky here. Yeah. You, know, right, right, right. you know, you get that thought, you know, you're yeah. Yeah. It's like you're, something's telling you, it ain't you. It's yeah. another, like something, like it's a different, it's, it's a different voice. Yeah. It goes, uh-uh, you keep going. All right. So <laughs> and even the homie that's driving goes, I, I don't know if you want to get out there. I don't know, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. I go up to La Mirada, locals right here at Bellevue Park. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I go there and they, and they, and they, and they, they stop me. Yeah, they're like, hey, bro, we already know what you're doing here. <laughs> they give me a few twenties. They're like, yeah. don't come back. Yeah, <laughs> like we already, we already heard about you. Yeah, like we know words you're... already spreading. Yeah, yeah. The, left, the lefty <laughs> boxers <laughs> robbing yeah. motherfuckers for their. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. We already and we like, hey, you're a good homie. We like you. We respect you. But it, it ain't go like like the, here. This is it. This is one time thing. Don't come back. 
Yeah. Right. I'm good looking out, homie. I get that <laughs> the youngster's pissed. He's like, that's it. We're going back to the neighborhood. I go, yeah, we got enough dope now, man. We're going to come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, a couple hundred dollars worth of dope. He's like, yeah. we ain't even got money for the gas. I'm like, don't worry about the gas. When we get to the hood, don't trip. Yeah. When I get to the neighborhood, right? Yeah. And I get out, and my homeboys pull me aside. They go, hey, man, them, them, hey, what'd you do up there in 18th Street? I go, what do you mean, 18th? Like, I'm trying, 18th Street? Like, which one was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which link was and that? And then the homie tells him. He goes, the the, 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 the ones in that other bag, in the glab. And I still had that. Yeah. So I'm ready to smoke that shit. That was probably the best dope. That's the only reason why I took it. I looked at it and I go, this dope is different from all the other dope. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, right. I can tell this dope right here is going to get me high. This other yeah. bullshit, I'm just going to get mad. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I'm like, 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 and then something, like another light went on. I go, this might be the shit that's going to get you fucked up. Yeah. Like, like fucked up. Right. Because I felt the vibe of my homies are like, what'd you do, man? Them fools came through here. And then first thing they said, like, where's your homeboy Lepke? They didn't know? shoot nobody. No, They're and asking. then he goes, and the thing about it is, we, like, we're, like there was like, like, the, yeah. It's like, like, they, they came here and they were cool when, you know, when they could have lit us up. Because, yeah. like, did you go up there? I'm like, yeah, you know, and they're like, you need to go home and say, they're looking for you, homie. Yeah. Like, you need to get the bike, give them the bike. They give me a stone, stone beach cruiser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Hey. And then the other homie, like the the G homie, yeah. he's like, hey, homie, you've been out here for a week, man. Just go take a break. Go go back to the pad. Yeah. Like, you got a lot of dope. Here, you want to take a drink. They gave me some cognac. I took a big old guzzle, and, you know, I had a bottle like up on the porch. I had some Remy Martin stashed up there. Because I drink, like, like when I'm getting high, I like to drink off top shelf shit. Yeah. Man. I'm drinking fucking VSOP, Remy Martin. Oh, and I'm drinking. <laughs> Good right? shit. Yeah, I'm drinking uh, Warm Old English. That was my drink. Warm 800, War, uh, Old English 800, and fucking E&J or Remy Martin. Yeah. And I'm drinking them both, right? And so, yeah. So I get on the bike, and I got a few, you know, I got a few rocks in my mouth. I gave the little homie some. I gave the my homie. In other words, I blessed my neighborhood with that whole fucking come up. Yeah. You know, I'm like, from all the shit that I did to you guys for the past week, right. here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> right, right, right. See you tomorrow. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, you finally. Like, yeah. like, like, they were happy. Yeah. I left them happy. I got dope in my mouth. I got, you know, little here. You know, I got a good drink in me. I ride the bike. You know where I drive? I drive all the way back up to fucking McCadden and fucking Yucca, where I got more homeboys from my neighborhood on McCadden. Oh, yeah. Right up there on McCadden and then on, on, on Las Palmas. Yeah. And McCadden, there, I got a few homies that are up there selling because I, I still got dope that I want to bless these little homies with. Yeah. Right? And maybe take another blast because I just rode from El Centro. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a blast. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I put the beach cruiser on the church. There's a church behind me. Right. I don't notice this. I put the fucking bike up. I call this brother. Come here, bro. You know, he's, he's got the pipe like this. You know, he's smoking. <laughs> he's moving the pipe around. I'm like, let me see that pipe. He's like, oh, don't push my bike. Go ahead. Hold on. I <laughs> see what I got? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. I ain't fucking around. I fucking just put a whole fucking like out of that crack that, that, uh, the big is, bag. Yeah. I take a big old fucking, like one of the big, the biggest piece of the thing. And I'm just, he's like, shit's dropping. I'm like, hey, don't trip off that. <laughs> start tripping and you can't kick it, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to save you. There's going to be a lot in there. I can't take this whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, OG, OG, OG. Go ahead, big man. <laughs> man, I get a good one, man. I'm, I'm talking about it so good. I'm blowing that motherfucker around. And I turn like this and I go, and then it dawned on me, man. I just fucking took a hit. And I'm a spiritual man, even yeah. when I'm fucking around. Right. And I go, this ain't cool. I just smoke on the Lord's property in front of the Lord's house. And right after I thought that, a fucking Granada pulled up, man. On the wrong side of the street. And they're like, yeah, I say, yeah, homie, what's up? Remember me? Remember me? So Chato got out. First uh, Chato gets out. I start fighting him. They're like, uh, where you from? I say, I'm like, you know where I'm from. I start fighting Chato. Right, and then the dude, the crumb sack dude, yeah, right, yeah. For the dude in the front, he comes out, right. He's got the, you know, the guy. He's got it like this, but because I'm fighting, there's three of them, so I'm fighting the the driver. Me and him are head up, right, and I'm I'm rushing, man, because I just took this hit. The black guy's gone. Yeah, oh, <laughs> everybody's gone. <laughs> like the yeah. pipe's gone, everything. <laughs> so I'm fighting the homie right there, and then the other dude. He's like, what's up, puto? And then I got the other one that I just, he goes, remember me, remember me. I'm like, yeah, I remember. Yeah. So it's all coming back. Like, fuck. Like, like I, I like I was already thinking when when I got to the neighborhood that something bad was gonna happen, right? Right. Right. right? That like why didn't I go home? Yeah. Like, I don't even know why. Cunning, baffling, and powerful. Right. Right? I don't even know why I didn't go home, right? Like, like I'm thinking that now. Like, I fucked up, right? Yeah. So the other dude is like, 
Muévete, muévete. Mortalo, mortalo. I hear the one dude saying, because I'm thinking, well, these motherfuckers are moving like they got a gun. Yeah. yeah. Like, but it's yeah. not coming because yeah. everything's happening so quick. And all I feel is fucking the bullets hitting me, bro. And it's like the hydra the your the adrenaline. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, like a lot of people haven't experienced that. I, the, the adrenaline thing. Yeah. But the adrenaline is almost like shooting a straight ball of coke. Yeah. Like you feel it. Like your adrenaline goes up. Yeah. And plus I'm rushing on the coke. And then when I came out of the nine and a half uh, uh, hour uh, surgery. Wait yeah. a minute. Back up a second. Right, how many times he shoot you? All right. So listen. So I don't know how many. But I'm going to tell you. How, so so what I do. So I'm going to get. Yeah. This is a good. This is. Wait for it. Wait for it. All right, <laughs> look, so now. So this is what happens. So. So they did the shooting. Right. Yeah. Right. And I felt the bullets. And now I'm thinking. Right. And they got in the car. All cool. Like he emptied the gun. So it's a 38. How many slugs a 38 hole? Six, yeah. Right, and they weren't 38 slugs because if you know anything about a th Smith & Wesson 38, yeah. it can hold a 9 millimeter slug. Oh, no. And that's what he had in there because you could shoot off a 9 millimeter slug in a 38. But I didn't know that then. I'm not doing all this research this <laughs> down the line. I don't know what the fuck. It could have been a fucking 22 or a 30, yeah. whatever. It's a fucking gun. And yeah. I know I just got shot. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like... Fuck, I got shot behind these rocks. So that's, you know, like, that's not going through my head yet. What's going through my head is, okay, I need to get from here to Hollywood Boulevard, right? Yeah. Because the whole fucking street is silent. Yeah. Like, when, when you blast a gun off, people in Hollywood, yeah. they're doing two things. They're closing their windows, everything's shutting down, and ain't nobody fucking running out to help you. Right? Yeah. Right. So I'm like, fuck, I, I, I know I'm fucked up because I feel I got shot. You know, so yeah. I'm like, I got to run from here to Hollywood. Because I know if I could get to Hollywood Boulevard, there's cops, there's a fucking ambulance, and there's people that'll see me that I'm fucked up. Right? Yeah. So I'm fucking trying to get up to Hollywood Boulevard. I'm halfway between the Egyptian theater or somewhere there where there's nothing but parking lots, and it's getting real dark, and I'm not making it. I'm starting to see, like, the fucking fog in the TV. Yeah. Like, zzz, because what's happening is the process that's taking place is one of the bullets went in my lung, and my lung is filling uh. up with blood. Right? So yeah. I'm thinking, and then, you know, I got one that went a fraction from an inch to my heart. I got a few, one ruptured my spleen. So there's a whole bunch of drama going on. And all I know is that I'm losing my fucking, and I hit my knees, bro. And I couldn't make it to Hollywood, but I made it halfway up that block. Right? Yeah. And I got there, and I hit my knees, and it dawned on me. This is, I'm going to tell you exactly what I saw before I went out. I heard the ambulance from far distance, because you figure somebody probably did, it's like, there's a shooter. After a while, few minutes or something, one of the concerned neighbors probably did their duty as a fucking citizen. Citizen, right. they called the fuck up. So I hear the siren coming from a distance. And right when I heard that siren, the only thing that went through my head was the streets you you the streets you got high on, you gang bang for, that you represented, the neighborhood, the name, right? Mm -hmm. This is part of the, the game of this. This is how it's gonna end for you. Yeah. You knew when you fucking got jumped into the barrio and you knew when you started deciding to take your your will and put it in the hands of all this dope and using and doing scandalous shit and fucked up things and abusing everybody and anybody who loved you. No concern for your grandmother. All this shit was like going through my head. Right. Yeah. And then the split decision, the the the, the moment of the, the clarity that we call the moment yeah. of clarity, which was the moment of me just accepting the fact, and I told myself, man, I go, you, you know, this, this is you're gonna, you, this is what you got coming, yeah, because of what you did, like this fool ain't a punk. like I thought about this down the line, yeah, this dude ain't a punk, and I'm gonna mention something on this podcast that I didn't mention on the other one when I shared this, I maybe I did, but I don't remember, but so so it dawned on me, that's right, like it dawned on me. Right. Yeah. I, I thought, OK. All right. So as I was, you know, going out like dying, I yeah. thought, OK, I'm, I'm dying now. So I got to accept this. Yeah. Right. And I didn't ask God. I didn't go, hey, man, I'm going to be a good guy if you let me pull through. It wasn't one of those first. Yeah. It was like, please, man, put me somewhere where I didn't have to suffer like I did down here. Fuck. That was my prayer. Do something with me so I won't suffer no longer. Yeah. I mean, I was a good guy at some point. I yeah. I helped the old lady with her groceries. <laughs> yeah. I fucking opened the door like my grandmother taught me. Right. Respect women and children. Open the door for an old lady. Be a good individual. There was some point of that that I incorporated in some of my program, but not all of it. But whatever you got, whatever I got coming, I accept it. Yeah. Right. I did the wrong thing. So don't make me suffer no more. Like, a redemption. Like, yeah. 
enter, may I enter the gates through heaven through you, thy will be done. That prayer was said because I knew about the program. Yeah. I knew how to be a good guy. It was taught to me. My mother and them didn't raise me a bad guy. Yeah. They taught me, hey, you respect this and you do this and you know, I didn't follow it. Yeah. Like, you know, the dope fiend I am. And all I remember was I opened my fucking eyes nine and a half hours later with the, some dope still stuck in my mouth. Cedar Sinai Hospital, trauma center, intensive care up there. And I thought, because I'm a loud motherfucker and I'm so loud I couldn't talk. They had the chest tube down my throat. Right? The chest tube, you can't talk. Mm -hmm. And I can't move. So I'm thinking, you know, you come out of a nine and a half hour surgery. You don't know where the fuck you're at. You can't talk. You don't know what's fucking going on. I start crying. It's a traumatic experience. Yeah. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm alive. The fucking good Lord, after all that shit I was shooting to him about, I accept what's going to happen. I open my fucking eyes. I'm still on earth. But yeah. I'm paralyzed because I can't walk. I'm like, he took my legs. He took my vocal cords. Maybe one of them bullets hit me in the vocal cords. I don't know. I yeah. can't talk. The nurse came. I start writing shit down. She's like, you're okay. You know, you can't talk. You have a chest tube. I wrote water. You can't drink water when you got that thing in you. There's no water. Why can't, why do my legs feel like this? Am I par- I put, I, why, uh, I, uh, am I okay? She's like, she, I could hear. Everything's okay. You have a chest tube. You're not paralyzed. Yeah. Give me some morphine. I know I got some morphine coming. I know this. Like, I'm in pain, man. Yeah. Like, I feel my nose. Like, what's wrong with my nose? It was like a cigar. Yeah. It blew. From the pressure of the gun, my fucking nose, I still have. Oh, shit. That's yeah, fucked up. So, I lived through that, man. That's wild. That was a good one, man. That was like, yeah. that should have been the wake-up call. Right? Yeah. Like I said, like I say, I sit amongst you and share the story. Like, like you kids are listening, whoever the fuck's out there listening. Like it's not being glorified in the manner to where how I'm explaining it. It's being glorified in the manner that my higher power or my Lord or God or what Allah or whatever the Hashem or whatever the fuck you want to call him, bro. It's like, it's time to do the right thing today and help others and lead them to a better life, man. I go with the sincerity in my heart to take an individual, you youngsters who are listening, man, that are fucking indulging in bad lifestyle, man, and not doing healthy things for yourself. I'm here, man, to, as a prime example that if you're one sitting there, oh, I'm fucking too slick. It ain't going to happen to a guy like me. I got it better. I know what I'm doing. You're just a fucking trick ass dofi from a neighborhood. Yeah. Well, you know what? I know. Like, I'm going to tell you like this, man. If that's how you feel, that's good. I respect your feelings and whatever you're going to go through. But if you get down like the way I get down and you shoot dope the way I shoot dope, get ready for the bullets because they, they're they on the menu. Yeah, along with the menu. Yeah, they're on the menu. Yeah, Lefty, Lef- Lef- he got a tattoo on him. I saw it in the joint <laughs> yeah. the first time. And it's a star of David, right? Yeah. yeah. And it says, never right. again. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. So he so he got that um so he tells me that yeah. after this whole surgery happens yeah. in Cedar Sinai, oh, right? Yeah, listen like to this. the next like the, the next doctors day, are standing the, the doctor, around like, comes, like, a line of surgeons yeah, comes into yeah, his, in his room, right? Listen. And all these surgeons yeah. and doctors are standing. This is the day after he's gone through right. nine hours of surgery. Yeah. And the main doctor's like, Hey, listen, you know, yeah, we 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 saved your life because right. you came in D- DOA. Yeah, I was we DOA, life, man. Right? I was a hundred, I was a, a minute. And some change, they t- explained to me they had to revive me. Oh, fuck. So and, I had already died. Like, I didn't see no, uh, like, no hole or no, I don't remember nothing. Yeah. And the doctor, the main surgeon, is like, right. listen, part of the whole reason I saved you, yeah, because we wanted to find out how a Mexican, Mexican gang member yeah. has a Star of David <laughs> tattooed yeah. on him. We want to know what the These story is. These are like Jewish doctors, man. Even the, the, the girl, the ladies, yeah. the interns. They look like they were like Jewish. Yeah, right, 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 like, right, I was right. tripping like they're all standing around. Yeah, with their, they want to know why. There's like How? eight. Hey, there's like eight doctors want to know why I have a star of David that says <laughs> never again. Like they want to hear me, right? Yeah. No, they waited. As a matter of fact, it wasn't after the surgery. They waited till that chest tube came out. Yeah. They're like they probably left an instruction. As soon as we pull that chest tube out and he can fucking talk. Yeah. You fucking ring the buzzer and let us know. <laughs> yeah, we want to talk to Because as that soon guy. as that fucking chest tube came out and I was comfortable drinking some water and shit, they fucking stormed the fucking intensive. They, fucking they, you know what the first thing they told me? Just huh. so you know, you're going to have problems the rest of your life from those bullets. You know, you got shot. You Five of them went in. One of them ricocheted off of your fucking, you know, on my arm or somewhere. Yeah. Five entered. None were fatal. One you know, went a fraction from an inch to your heart. We might have to go back in there and cut you open. If you don't heal right, and I didn't. At some point, I had a catamonia, mm-hmm. 
right? And then my heart, I wasn't breathing good. I was losing air. And like I woke up one night, I was sweating. And they came in and they put antibiotics and they put the fucking mask on me. Came the next day, they're talking about, yeah, that bullet, like it could have fucked your heart up. We might have to go in there and look at your heart. Fuck. Like we're going to have to cut you open and look at your heart. If this fucking antibiotic doesn't go through you and you don't start breathing right in the next few days, we're taking you back in surgery. And I prayed again. I was like, damn, that was enough, Lord. Like, really? I was like tripping. Like, yeah. I was more scared to go for the second surgery that I just pulled out of a first surgery to go. Like, I even thought, like, I'd rather get shot all over again and take a chance yeah. than to go into surgery and not knowing what the fuck's going on. You left you lay. And you think that'd be enough for Frank DeMarco? <laughs> no, they got me but again. No, I'm glad to get shot another five times. Yeah, and then -uh. in 2002. Wait, wait, wait. I got a, I got a quick question. All right. So, you get out of the hospital. Right. Where do you go? I went to my mother's house, man. And All then right. you were straight for No, a no, I'm going to tell you what happened. Now, this is right. <laughs> so, anyway, my mother. Hell no. Yeah, Hell you know, no. So, you know. Like moms is like, you know, I, I know this is going to straighten you out. You're going to be all right. You're going to be. Yeah. yeah. For like uh, on the third day I, at my mother's house, when she went to work, I creeped back down to downtown and got me mm -hmm. some dope because I show everybody that I'm shot. Mm -hmm. That's a free, you know, that's a free get high for a day. Oh, hell two. yeah. Right. For <laughs> Sympathy <day>. dope. <laughs> right. Right. Just like when we get out of the joint, man. We, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, show we, up. Yeah. Oh, hey. yeah. Yeah. When you get out of the joint, you keep your fucking. Uh, uh, we were talking about that on uh, the other one. Yeah. yeah. When you get out of joy, you keep your state blues on for a yeah. few days. <laughs> <laughs>